I watched uh, that that Graham Hancock guy, the the guy I like from Joe Rogan, uh, the one who theorizes about the last I, Ice Age. Um, is he the Gagebly Techie or something? Yeah, yeah, he is. Um, he's got they gave him a Netflix show, Look at that, and I haven't listened to any of those. Dude, the Joe hmm. Rogan, the Joe Rogan power is strong. Like, like it got that guy a Netflix show. He's got a big deal Netflix uh, series. Um, it's like I don't know four, five, six um, episodes. There's a lot of archaeologists already just shitting on it and be like, "This is blasphemy." I mean, it's <laughs> so funny because right off the bat in his in his show he, he, in his show on Netflix, he's like talking about how archaeology tries to shut him down left and right, talking about how like they don't want like mainstream archaeology hates us at every step. They try to befoul us <laughs> or whatever nonsense he says. And uh, he's, he's, he's intersplicing these clips of the Joe Rogan experience and him talking to Joe Rogan, like in the episode of this show. But it's pretty good. I only watched the first episode. They went to, um, I don't know, some dirty uh, jungle. And there was this uh, this like step pyramid thing made out of these sort of hexagonal uh, rocks Ooh. that are volcanic in nature. But they must have hauled them 500 miles or something. Um, seemed like a bunch of horse shit to me, but I was thinking that maybe the future episodes might have some more likely uh, um, ancient. That seems fun. And you know what? Like in the field of archaeology, like if some guy was like, "Yeah, I'm a mathematician, and everybody's doing it wrong," I'd be like, <laughs> "Obviously, you're a goof," because all these other people have their their maths. In a field like archaeology. I'm I'm willing to believe this. Like this guy's at least right on a thing or two. Like they're archaeologists get real. There's so much shit you haven't found. You don't know the right timing. There was a story that came out a couple weeks ago where like a formerly like debunked Roman emperor who was a total myth. They found coins with his face on it, and they were like, "Okay, he was real." Like, <laughs> okay, this guy was a real Roman emperor. We just found coins with his face on it. Like it was previously thought to be a myth. Now, like to think we know like anything like every everything i guess i would say like that's crazy of course there's stuff we don't know there's probably I really whole, like the idea of yeah. those of those civilizations that predate like uh, that is cool you know the ice age they, they go back to like I, I like the idea of i don't know people living in giant pyramids with uh infrastructure and technology with like mammoths pulling their sleds and like worrying about saber-toothed tigers and shit like like, like I, I i like that world that's a cool yeah. world there was a I've mentioned it before, but there's that awful movie, 10,000 BC, and that's the whole premise. It's like Apocalypto, but time but shifted bad. to 10,000 BC. Yeah. If you want to watch a great movie, though, of, that Mel Gibson's Apocalypto is always, always the, just the tip of my tongue when I'm recommending things to people. Hmm. It's a good movie. I haven't seen Apocalypto. Like, I think I saw it in theaters, and then that was the most recent time I've seen it, maybe. I remember liking it, thinking it was really cool. Yeah, it's the, fun. It's really violent. Isn't it like, it's uh, about like the Mayans, the Incas. I get the Mayans and the Aztecs, Aztecs mixed up, but yeah, it's about those uh, South American brown people and uh, and how like yeah, it, the, the narrative is that these guys are in like a small tribe and they're getting kidnapped and their village is getting ransacked by the people who live in like the big city where they mm. you know sacrifice people to the gods and have those giant pyramids and everything. And so they have to go out in the jungle to the little tribes and grab people for those sacrifices. And you see, not through language, because I don't, there's no English. It's all in some ancient dialect, but I don't think there's subtitles. But you kind of just visually learn through the visual storytelling, because Mel Gibbs is an amazing director, that this is a failing culture. There is famine, there's disease. And the reason that they're out here hauling all these people up to be sacrificed is to try to stop it. They're trying to stop the, the rot that, that's consuming them from the within. And then you see it at the end that <clears throat> the, I'll call him the wizard, but you know the the, the head priest, the uh, the astronomer, um, probably a slash astrologer, is has been able to predict that the there's going to be an eclipse, and he's like giving the king the nod so that he can like pretend like he's the one making the sun disappear, and you mm -hmm. just imagine the power that that would create for your your leader if you showed up because the boss said he was going to block the sun from the sky today, and you're like bullshit, we'll show up, do it, and he went. Oh, and the sun disappeared. Oh yeah. You, I mean, I'm. You got to do what that guy says. You got to do what that hmm. guy says. Like if if you can, like Jesus, what could he do to me? Yeah. Don't say. Don't say anything about Jesus. He hates that. He hates <laughs> that. He does not care for it one bit. 
Yeah, the the Aztecs like the uh, like obviously it's like up in the air, but like the amount of people they purportedly sacrificed is like insane. Like thousands of people a year are some of like the lower estimates. Like really, so ma- they said sa- human sacrifice. They were like it was just another Wednesday. Dang, bust like they killed another Wednesday. <laughs> they just sacrificed so many people. In their, I guess, to their gods or whatever. I don't, I don't know anything about like the Aztec religion. Like, well, maybe mythology. that's why things went so well for them, Taylor. Yeah, yeah. Mm, well, uh, what Graham Hancock? Didn't. Always... But you may, but you may not know this, Woody. It didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, know, it, you may not know this. I think if I think Spain pushed their shit in. Like, I uh-huh. think <laughs> I think Spain showed up and was like, "Oh, like you guys are in Dark Age." Oh my god, that like you know, like we've had gunpowder for like a real long time. Like Aztecs are like, man, we, we shouldn't have killed all the, the inventors. Giant. Yeah, we should <laughs> yeah, we shouldn't have killed that guy who came up with that really mysterious shining bulb. Like <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> he, he could have helped yeah, like that that was like a poor guy in history, the 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 Aztec Ben Franklin. It's like oh, guys, well, great news! <laughs> then it just cuts to his head bouncing down stone steps. <laughs> What's oh, interesting, like, like like the Romans had little steam powered toys, but they had no concept to industrialize steam power. You know what I mean? Like, like and then there's been a lot of discussion. There's a whole YouTube channels that go on about it for hours about could the Romans have been on the verge of an industrial revolution a thousand years before the real one? You That's know, could, totally realistic. Like, like, yeah. Well, they break down a lot of reasons why the empire would, wouldn't have been able to support such a thing. Something oh. about raw materials. No, but like if they and, had stayed, if they hadn't been like invaded by Germanic tribes and and all of. Well, I mean, eventually, yeah. But but they, you know, they already like what was to stop them from doing it then and there was the sort of the the question. If they if they already understand steam power and the power of steam to because they had they they had these toys and basically like you put water under it and this little thing like walks around and spins and shit and it's mm-hmm. like if you can do that you make a steam drill to mine with and like any number of like locomotive type inventions but, yeah you know thousands of years or eight thousand years before am i we did messing up my empires but didn't the romans like go into europe and maybe have the resources they'd need uh it well, was less about like access to the resources and more about the way their economy was set up i think and uh the, the like the, the way things the way that an entrepreneur would not be um, rewarded for, you know, coming up with a new thing mm. that didn't fit the mold of the empire. Uh, you know, it, it's like, oh, you got a new way of make. Yeah, look, everyone does it this way. They, they'd have been slow to change, and or it would have been a difficult change. I can't remember exactly how he made sense of it, but it was it took him an hour and a half, and he called himself an historian. So I believed him. <laughs> oh, trust me, hour and a half. That's a lot of time. That's it what was a lot of time. Sounds revenue. like a motherfucker who can't explain how to rob a jewelry store. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, Larry, tell us about the jewelry store. He's like, let me say, let me tell you something about the Incas. <laughs> <laughs> the human sacrifice that was going on there makes my crimes look mild. And it's like, what are you what talking Jesus. about? Like, <laughs> so succinct to the point and full of rich detail, though, when it talks about like ancient oh, yeah. Mesopotamia <laughs> and their farming and agricultural techniques. He's just, it just a silk boys. <laughs> The suit from the Nile River Delta, you've got to understand. You've got 20 million square <laughs> hectares being condensed there. And when it all dries up, it's the richest farmland on this planet. The Fertile like, like Crescent, breaks, they call it. The Fertile Crescent. <laughs> yeah. Between Dude, the Tigris and the Euphrates, the birthplace you've got of civilization. Me, my, Taylor, I crossed the Mississippi River today. That shit oh. is like dried up. There's a huge beach. It's like 30 feet lower than it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, we've had like a couple days of like sprinkly, gloomy shit, but we have not had big rain in a while, which is unusual around here. Usually, we get more. Even so. though we're, do you need rain, or do you, does it rain in like Minnesota or something? And that's where it comes from. Don't the don't, mountains f- like melt and feed it? Like I don't think rain is the problem. Well, the Mississippi is isn't coming from mountains. I don't think, like at least in the U.S., from? you know, it's that's that's a fun. It's actually a mystery. Doesn't it comes <laughs> like, like is, there a, is, is there a water? I don't know if I should believe. Taylor no, it's right actually now. it's actually unknown. Yeah, the hole in the sky right below Canada. They they kept water. trying to follow it back to the source, but they get distracted. They get lost. <laughs> <laughs> they get lost. Um, all right, well, so let boring. me guess yeah, where the know. Mississippi comes from, and I'm going to say it's the Great Lakes. Um, I bet that has something to do with it. 
Yeah, I would guess. So we got to we got to figure out where did the Great Lakes go. Maybe we can solve this. <laughs> when's the last time you saw? When's the last time either of you saw one of the Great Lakes? I've it's never been a minute confirmed. For me. Actually, that's not true. I've been to Detroit, Chicago, and, and to, Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's been, the coldest. One. That's one of the cold like things I've ever felt. Was like the hey, wind wait. blowing up that fucking lake in Chicago. Lake Itasca. I, I was right. Like. It does seem to originate in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Yeah, so just, maybe once they get more it, snow and it melts, is it like a dwarf woman? Going. Does it just spring out of the ground or like She's like where it No, it it really though. Like I followed it up on Google Maps to oh, God damn it. Minneapolis, <laughs> and it goes to the Saint Croix Falls and kind of just starts there. I guess. Well, don't, I don't just know. use a map. Ask somebody. On no, the it says that lake. <laughs> no, you're right, Kyle. It's from a or you're both right. It's from a glacial lake in Minnesota called Lake Itasca. Oh. And well, we need to pump some water in Lake Atasca. You know what? I bet it is anywhere. It's near fine. It's such Michigan. an ugly river. Mississippi's fine. Just like, pump some water into the. <laughs> yeah, just we need to get this water moving. If you're low on water, just pump water from the place. Yeah, just just <laughs> push. <laughs> I never heard those people in Flint, Michigan, say that they don't have water. All I hear them say is they don't like the water they have. So I say, if you don't like it, ingrates. I hear some, there's some people in Lake Wanaconca who could use a little water and maybe we'll yeah. take some of that Flint, Michigan water. And look, the way nature you know works, who else it'll yeah, really like it'll clean water? Filter, the Nazis. It'll filter that dirty water <laughs> out. It'll clean that water. By the time it gets to Mississippi, it'll be clean. It, all that Flint filth will have washed out of it. Probably yeah, sooner than yeah. that. It could, could be true. I mean, the, the Mississippi River is disgusting. Lake Titicaca? That's not a real wait, place. If it melts from glaciers, we could just put more glaciers there. Yeah, but oh. I think that's a, a t- big to do. Easy enough. Eh. Ice machine, dude. Have you seen? We like, steal snow- a glacier from Canada. The- they couldn't stop us. Oh, can you just? <laughs> why don't they hook up to icebergs ever and like haul them in like rich guy style and have a good time with them? I would if I was like a billionaire. I'd do shitty stuff like that. Like like oh, you don't <laughs> you you think my private jet's bad for the environment? I'm I'm gonna hook up to the biggest iceberg I can fucking find. Fly it to drag it across the planet to Tahiti. And we're gonna chip the fucking thing off in our drinks while we while we like, sit on the beach. <laughs> you know what I would do if I was like a big old billionaire? I'd be like, all right, I'll, I'm prepared to put billions towards environmental safety, cleaning lakes, getting plastic and shit out of the oceans. But we're gonna meet out my money, and it's gonna depend on cumulative U.S. BMI levels. If I'm doing my part <laughs> to to help eliminate this consumption problem. We all have to reduce consumption. So as soon as average BMI gets down to 30, boom, we're saving penguins. Also, I'm playing hardball. Every day it doesn't get below 30. I'm fucking killing some some penguins. <laughs> also, let people penguins know that you're, you're playing for real. Yeah. Peng- well, I mean, I'm just, I, I picked a, a likable animal. Like, no one would can be upset if it's babies? like, I'm going to, you you can, well, you'd have to take their babies house, but you can c- control them with an iron fist. I like the, that. Yeah, you know, they get good. real upset when you, I've seen like people would get upset, like, but think of how many lives I would be saying I'd no, be the, the biggest life upset. saver on earth. No, I've and seen, I would like, be the only one exempt from the BMI thing. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, I mean, you no, get bigger. I don't and bigger. think any of us. <laughs> bigger bigger. I don't think that calculator works for any of us. I, I, they, I, I no, I've seen where like a shitty penguin will like fuck up and like break their egg or kill their baby or something, and they'll run and kidnap somebody else's baby, but then they'll fucking get bored of it and they'll abandon it. <laughs> And the and the yeah. original parent is can't find him now because you know it's not like they left them at at the at the Seven Eleven. They all look the same. I, I I enjoy those a lot. That that and uh, the ancient civilization YouTubers, the ones who think that uh, you know the Earth was uh, we had ancient civilizations that were advanced. Like um, yeah. one of the cool, what about the Atlantis the one where it's like the Ring City. Have you seen that one? Oh, that sounds yeah, cool. No, I, I haven't seen Ring City. You don't like what that is one? It? I. I Here's why I like the the younger Dryas thing, and and with the um with the Sphinx in particular. So they they looked at where the it's when the sun lines up with the constellation of Leo um was what was eleven thousand six hundred years ago, which is when they think the Sphinx was built. Like the the, the crackpot scientists think anyway. Um, so they think it was built by a civilization before the Egyptians, and they're like, why would they build a lion? Like during the Egyptian times, it was the bull. It was Taurus was the one in. Uh, lined up with the you know the path of the sun but if you go back to when they think that comet struck and caused the younger driest disaster and all that shit um it was leo so i thought that was a little interesting tidbit 
I don't know. What I is, like that uh, stuff a lot. I spend a lot of time every morning. Um, I come in here and I drink my coffee and I spend an hour at least watching YouTube shorts. What's uh, the historical. most convincing uh, one of those stories about either the ring, the Atlantis thing or Gebekli Tepe or whatever that's called. That's actually sucked you in and you've been like, I buy this. There are some um, tool marks on um, the place where they mined the granite for the pyramids or um, it, it's, 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 a, it's a good distance away, like, like hundreds, a hundred miles or something away. But there are these tool marks that are kind of weird. You know, it's just like, how, how do they do that? How were they cutting that out like that? It looks like they've been machined. So that one always sticks out to me more than the crackpot shit. Like as much as I like Randall Carlson, I've heard him be like, but their technology could have been something completely different than ours. They speak of the priests chanting. So I think maybe an acoustic energy was used to levitate these blocks. And it's like, no, dude. Yes. There's a reason why like every group of people came up with bow and arrows dependently. It's that tech makes sense. Like, like you know what I mean? You're not gonna just branch off into magic acoustics instead of uh, you know electricity or steam power or some shit. So yeah. that part's nonsensical <clears throat> to me. And anything ancient aliens is bullshit. What about Atlantis? Is the story that it's like it's a city that used to be not underwater. Now it's all. Yeah, it's that's the one I was talking about where a guy like using satellite, uh, whatever. I mean, Google satellites. He that's found like this topography. area. Yeah. Is that the one uh, you used a name that I hadn't heard of? Is that the guy? Topography. Yeah. Uh, no, the topography I heard of the guy who <laughs> found like the ring area of Atlantis. I don't know. It was a cool video. Uh, Dr. Just Indiana ins- Jones. That's low key seen- insult <laughs> dick all night long. <laughs> yeah. So according to the old tales or whatever, like it was uh, a ringed city. So you had these rings and uh, of land and then water, you know, repeating for like, I don't know, three rings of land or whatever. And I think they found a formation that's like that under the water somewhere. But like, you're going to have to go down there and find some like, I don't know, some marble statues. Yeah, or some, something some neat. Hoos- yeah. yeah, I need But to it's see totally believable it. that there's sure. like a city that used to, that is now underwater that used to not be. They it find was in Northern all Africa. The it's on uh, above. I don't know why I'm getting into this stupid. No, it's in the Mediterranean or something. Yeah, near the Mediterranean. Mm-hmm. That's where it's, that's where it should be. Or or mm-hmm. or or some. I've heard people say in the, in the Atlantic as well. Yeah, that's the idea. I don't know what that is on the left though. That seems like. Oh, I guess the, it's that's just, the Sarlacc pit. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh my God! Can you believe Boba Fett made it out of there? What horse shit! What horse that shit! Is, By the way. I'll tell you what, I'm not sure if I can beat up Amanda Nunez. Maybe I'm talking out of my ass. I know for goddamn sure I can beat up B- Boba Fett. I could beat the dog shit out of Boba Fett. The actor who plays him, put him mm-hmm. in his armor. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Wait, isn't that, that uh, Pedro Pascal? Give him a blaster. <laughs> don't give him a blaster. I don't wanna... <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. Maybe we'll oh, you are ins- <laughs> Yeah, yeah, body modification. All right, I want to talk about ancient body modification. Maybe Wendigoon's ever had some of his creepy ass He's stories. an expert That's... you mentioned before. Because <laughs> like, because one of those things I saw was that I think it's that South American tribe that would practice the uh, the skull elongation where they wrap mm-hmm. the baby skulls. And you can see photographs of babies that have had it done and their eyes are bulging. Africa, but what they end up with is um, these skulls that have been found down there and they look like X-Files aliens. OK, mm-hmm. like legitimately. And they're real. They're human skulls that through that practice have been made to look like this. Now, here's what all of the alien ancient alien people always go to. They don't say those are alien babies because, of course, we can DNA test them or maybe, you know, the rest of it's biologically human, whatever. They say, why were they doing that? Why did they want to look like that? Who were they trying to emulate? Maybe there was maybe there were some sort of alien overlords that were coming down, teaching them agriculture and uh, animal domestication. You know, the beginning of the skill tree and Mm -hmm. pottery. And uh, and 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 they had these big heads and they were like, oh. If only we could look like the gods. Because imagine, if you will, because in Christianity and all of the Abrahamic religions, right? Like, like God looks like us. It's a key part of it. It's right there in the beginning somewhere. Yeah. If your God <laughs> didn't look like you, I, it I is. Yeah. We are made in I, him in his image. Yeah. That's imagine it, yeah. if God didn't look like Whoa. us. How, how, is that how, a like, real one? No. no. I don't no, think. That, no, that's, that's not a, a real that's one. That's wood wood that's wood wood well, I don't I don't know what Zach's trying to do to me here, but, but they're real skulls. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you pull up that X Files alien autopsy footage from the nineties too? Like, like you know what's funny? It's like Kyle, I was like really I was putting like stock 
into what you were saying and like this image like undermined your story god damn it Zach. So you think it was some sort of some alien emulation of so i was thinking like oh i don't think that at all no 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 i'm just saying like i've often watched i've often watched those shows where that's their pitch like hey mm. this is why they did it because they want they want to tie everything that's a little peculiar in the past to aliens right and right. if you can like rope that one in to make that sort of a supporting argument for whatever other mm -hmm. kooky shit you've got, like chariots in the Bible being spaceships or whatever, like that's a good one to start with. For sure. There, I mean, the Bible talks about, Wendigo absolutely knows more about this, but like uh, you're familiar with like the Nephilim and, oh, and all of that. Oh, it, am it, I? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I would some love... audience members who haven't heard of it. Can you bring them up yeah, to speed? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so... All right, five, five minutes out the gate, we're in my zone. Let's go. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> uh, so in the Bible, there's mentions of things called Nephilim, which also off, often translates to giants or mighty men. Uh, and they're mentioned in the book of Genesis as being the children of what happened when the sons of God mingled with the daughters of men. So some people think this to be the idea of righteous people with unrighteous people, but some take that literally and think it's the products of angels breeding with humans mm -hmm. um there's mentions of angels coming down to earth so a lot of people draw that out of it <clears throat> see they got kyle it was that <laughs> <They> got <laughs> you're dangerous i'm gonna keep the head on a <laughs> yeah, taylor's next don't worry <laughs> uh anyway so giants are mentioned in the bible uh there's some famous ones like goliath for example uh, there's a giant that uh, I believe it was Noah face. Noah faced giants in his age. Uh, so there's a few places that they're mentioned specifically, but there's this idea throughout the Old Testament that they were a reoccurring thing. Uh, mm. Like when it ever talks about they go to Canaan, that they see giants in the land of milk and honey that they have to wipe out. There's giants among the Philistines, what have you. So the idea is there's this uh, biblical record of giants, and there's also a record of giants throughout other written histories like pretty much every group of people either had a legend or history of giants somewhere in their culture they tend to pop up around the historical record um and the idea is since the bible is the oldest in my opinion the oldest debated between that and like zoroastrianism as being the oldest religion ever that it's the first evidence of giants existing and in the bible they're called nephilim so yes nephilim are like the the starting route for a ton of crazy i'm sorry to interject Theories. We had a guest like two months ago arguing with me, telling me that Zoroastrianism wasn't the first religion. Do you remember that? Yeah, I, 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 I watched that episode. I do remember that. That, yeah. that. that was Aiden. That was Aiden. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that, that became more of an argument than I thought it would be. And that, that was just kind of like, oh, damn. Like, now we're like getting heated over, <laughs> over like demons and shit. If, 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 it, me if it means, uh, if it helps Kyle any, the theory that most people have, like myself, who believe that Christianity was, or like the Bible, Judaism at the time was first, is that Judaism and Zoroastrianism were simultaneous, that they kind of branched out at the same point uh, in the historical record. Which I have my own theories that Zoroastrianism is mentioned in the Old Testament as being other religions that are mentioned around the time of Abraham, but blah, blah, blah. Um, I, you see what I mean? You got me in my zone. No, that's, that's interesting. Well, <laughs> I, I have been admiring yeah this, i like the stuff uh, <laughs> start. i was like it's cool when we have like a professional level guest <laughs> on the show <laughs> i uh, like where i'm a sunday yeah. school teacher like you know a, a lot of what i do is talking to you know people my age and stuff they're like oh well you know christ wants us to live this way blah 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 but there's also a lot of all right kids so i found this verse in genesis i think it means that aliens came to israel blah 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 yeah i, I get to go on my whole rants and stuff so that's so fun. the bible so the bible is is kind of exacting when they give the um the dimensions of something like the ark do yes. they ever tell us about how tall these these giants are supposed to be because that's so important Yes, yeah, it does. Uh, whenever it mentions Goliath, which is, there's times that it mentions giants who stand with their waist at the height of man. That's more general. Goliath is specifically mentioned as, I think, nine and a half feet tall. Yeah, shit. Well, all right, all right, all right. Like Robert Wadlow what? size. Now, now when you say you? nine and a half feet, are you accounting for like their feet being tiny? Did they actually use their foot as a I, foot I, in I, that time? Because to be fair, these Hold are... On poorly fed jewish men that's true five thousand years ago <laughs> these are okay. small fellas 
it, well, I think they used measurement, measurement from your your elbow to your wrist or something like that. They, called, they uh, use the, they, they use the measurement is? of cubits. Cubits. The measurement cubits. of cubits. Uh, if I remember, it's yes, it says that he was six cubits and a span, um, which a cubit's about a foot and a half. So that comes out to a little over nine and a half feet. Six yeah, see, cubits see that's a, a see that's the problem. So like, obviously there you're dealing with some exaggeration because. Like I, I I don't believe that in that time, even with like a pituitary thing or whatever, whatever <laughs> makes people gigantic, that he'd have like the diet capable of of ex of surviving to manhood and being a, a nine foot tall being. <laughs> no, you, you know, know what would I mean? be funny is like if like that's entirely true. But Goliath was one of those pituitary giants. And so he, went, he went out to fight David, and they're like, there he is, the giant. And he has, like, crutches. He's like, oh. <laughs> Look at that beast. And they just bully him with a stone. <laughs> we were going to see if you guys had any medical intervention for him. God, don't kill him. Old school. Do you know about the, po do you know about the Potsdam Goliath. giants? That sounds familiar. So it's giants. It was a Prussian infantry unit in like 1675. All right. Now, <laughs> I, I can't remember if it was like the prince of Prussia or the king, whatever, the, the, the guy in charge, or at least in charge enough that he could have his own military unit at his whim, selected only the tallest men in the whole fucking Prussian empire. Yeah. Stupid question. What in where is the tech tree in 1685? Like mm. Uh, they got like shitty um um guns like, like, like early imperial age. Muskets. You have access to trebuchets, like stuff, yeah. shitty guns. They probably there'd be a lot of cavalry and still like armor, I would imagine, and like silly hats with points on them, and uh, probably some lots you know swords and pikes and shit. Swords, pikes, and the occasional. Floor. We're a hundred years from the American Revolution, you know, and like guns being that good. Yeah, they were like, so, that's the time they were figuring out, like, we got to phase out armor because we're now making, like, muskets that can blast through stuff. Mm. Well, anyway, this, oh, go ahead. this go guy ahead. who I think was probably gay was, like, fascinated <laughs> with tall men, okay? It was, like, his jam. So he, like, searches the kingdom. He's gay about quote, that. There's this quote from him. Hey, he's, watch he's, your what? mouth. There's this great quote. And he's, he's you like, oh, you can't have a harem always. of tall men. Or it's <laughs> he's got this great quote. I want Zach to find it. I should, I've given some contact mm -hmm. clues to his identity. I just can't remember the fucking you know, Prince of Prussia's name. But he, had, he said something like, keep your, your, your this, keep your that. Give me a tall man. <laughs> <laughs> and it, right, you and, may be on to something but, but he was like this would be a good video i think because like this regiment apparently was really tall guys because he searched the whole like country and got on and he even had a breeding program where he was trying to like pair up the tallest women and the tallest men to you know make an even yeah. taller regiment he never used them in battle because he was so beloved they were so beloved what on earth I, i'm looking huh. at his wikipedia the, the height of the king who organized this five three and so imagine how monstrous this battalion, and apparently the minimum height was 6'2", which back yes. then is enormous. Like, yes. like uh, Today, 400 is years usually ago, the tallest guy in a room. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Like, if you're 6'2", 400 years ago, like, you're probably starting conversations walking I bet he, he would Find us the average them. height for the time, Zach, because that's important. But I would guess that you're like Harley, essentially. You know, like, you're, you're like a 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six guy. Like, everybody's like, oh, Seven shit, one, one of them are here. Yeah. Yeah, you'd like they'd think there's something like wrong with you, or they'd be just like jealous of like, wow, that guy gets to eat every day. No, it'd be hard to be like again. I think it would be there's a reason people used to be smaller, and because it it didn't work to be big. Like a big man can't like work. All right, if you're five five, you do a day's work that gives you enough grain to support your five foot five body or whatever from the the boss. I just don't think the six foot six guy can do enough work to get him enough grain to, to like make up the difference. You know what I mean? He's not working hard enough to get enough grain more than the other guy. We're all getting fed the same. I wonder if we like, I wonder if we got shorter after agriculture. Is that something I made like when we, like that people were taller that like some hunter or maybe there's like some other thing. They found like hunter gatherer tribes that are pretty tall because they ate like so much meat like neander or i guess neanderthals are like a kind of a different thing giant yeah it was the circles back in yeah there you go <laughs> circles back in Pretty does sad. that mean the angels are black 
No. <laughs> what? Angels are, are it's a it's a total misconception that angels are even people, man. You've read I the Bible. That. You've I've... you've seen the orb of eyes. I had to make a black show. The the uh, <laughs> I know it's not theologically correct. <laughs> Shit, no, that's see, that's awesome. not canon. The, the, yeah, the the the, the ophanim, right? The canon. The giant, oh, I love calling the Bible eyes. canon. Yeah, I've often thought that maybe there's something to it being hard to survive in an area that helps them technologically advance. You know, like like you can't survive a whatever Finland winter unless you've got your heating figured out your housing figured out you're like you've got you, you've got to have a bit of a civilization you need to store food mm -hmm. if you can hang a hammock and fucking coconuts falling next to you all day long then maybe you're not incentivized to advance your society in the same that's way. true like it's like about winter like if you have to plan for winter it'd be like you have to like save up food and resources and stuff so no, it I seems like about winter does that meanwhile you've got in South America, where it's nice and cool, like temperate climate, where you just grab stuff out of the rainforest and eat it, as long as you control the panthers that are trying to eat you, I guess. That's again. They're inventing, they're inventing astronomy and calendars and predicting. South America did that, of course, yeah. They invented astronomy. Yeah. Well, they, they didn't in, invent astronomy. Did they invent this? How do you know? I oh maybe, know maybe they, they, they did they arrived <laughs> at it on their I, own. You mean like they were not the first people to. You know, discover like astronomy and all that. I, I Wasn't feel that, like, like the Middle East. I don't think we know who someone the first in Europe were. navigated by the stars. Yeah, or... like every every culture used the stars to navigate. But I, I mean, like I'm sure they about... figured it out at different times. Well, I was just talking about like the Mayan calendar and how far back that went, and and that's okay. They're, they're utilizing the stars and the and the and stuff to do that. Yeah. You know, and the the the, sure. the, the sun um, at its uh, like zenith or whatever on from either side, right? They but, built like, those uh, pyramids to to like show things at certain days of the year with the shadows. Those pyramids are pretty new. I, I I was just watching Ed March, C90 Adventures. He rides a tiny motorcycle. He went from like Alaska, across Canada, across America, then to Argentina, right? Can you picture yeah, how long Oh my God, ride? yeah. <laughs> right? That so sucks. along the way, he visits like this Aztec or Mayan temple. It's like a pyramid. And uh, then he finds out the thing is like 150 years old and he's British. So he's like, oh, yeah, actually, my, my bedroom is older than this pyramid. All right. Yeah. So, it's like, really? Because uh, so, Oxford's been a university since the year 900. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he may have, have found some pyramid they made for fucking tourists 150 years ago. But, but, but those pyramids go back thousands of years. Like, Which like, one? Like, Not um, according to a YouTuber I saw. Yeah. Maybe not the one YouTuber. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> Colin's doubting my historians. <laughs> so, I mean, you watched the Mel Gibson movie. Oh, uh, yeah. Apocalypto. That was a good movie. Yeah. Oh, I was like, pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> this makes sense. <laughs> Mad Max. <laughs> Mad Max. That classic film. No. Um, yeah. Like the Japanese. Isn't it like, like Japan's full of mountains and difficult weather and ter difficult terrain? What, weren't they they've been fucking with china for a very long time always trying to invade china always chinese always invented them the chinese invented paper gunpowder and maybe and the game writing start with sailing i think maybe writing we probably don't yeah. know who invented writing like i feel well, like all the time think, they i find feel some like older thing here's the thing though here's the thing though if they invented paper were they wiping their ass with it probably not first they're probably yeah. writing on it so I, I think chinese did all those things and then uh you know, they did. Our, our poor, ignorant ancestors were were over there being pale and cold, <laughs> very cold, <laughs> very, very chilly. Cold. Yeah, that would suck. Just mm. having months out of the year where it's like it's well, there's still nothing to do, but now it's cold. I've I hope completely we have discarded, disregarded all your contrary evidence, and I'm sticking with my view anyway. <laughs> that <laughs> <the> harsh <laughs> environments make for advanced civilizations. I think I, that, I think it's for hard people. Um, I, I think that that um, what, what's that whole thing where like um, you know the even necessi the you necessity is the mother of invention. I True. think that if someone, I think that if someone has a cold climate, that they will come up with a good way to deal with cold climates. I think if someone has a, 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 a like like a megafauna in their area, like big giant animals that are hard to deal with, they'll learn hunting tactics to like deal with that. But I don't think it necessarily makes them the best and brightest at all things. I don't think that the people who live in the cold 
hard to live in place are going to be the best scientists because they because it's hard there. I think that well, there's, maybe more, so, there's more difficult places to live than just cold like, places. I think but, a moderate place where not only can we uh, do we are we challenged, so we have to get out of our hammocks and stop eating the coconuts, but we can also relax once we figure this shit out a little bit and start calculating and looking at the stars and making lenses and figuring yeah, out. Yeah, you things. do have to be able to get on top of it. It can't be straight up desert or Arctic. Yeah. The Mayans that you brought up as your example of an advanced technological civilization, didn't they get shot by the Spaniards and just beaten? Smallpox. They did get beaten pretty badly. S- smallpox. Smallpox. Come on. Like, you know what? I always, yeah. I, what, you know, I you know, you always go to the smallpox. I, I yeah. think muskets were part of it. Guns and horses were a big part of it. And, and, and smallpox. It, it, it decimated them. It was, well, they didn't it, have vaccines. They didn't. You know what? Here's what, here's what <laughs> I always wondered, though. Um, so we, we always talk about like how the white people brought the smallpox over um, to, to the West and would wipe out these indigenous peoples. Why didn't they have any diseases to like fuck up the white people? They probably did. I bet like because there's going to be diseases everywhere, right? Like there must have been shit that that like all the Europeans started getting. If they, did, I guess not happened. as intense. Maybe it was like a milder sh- shit, but like no, it would have happened if they did, right? We would have gotten. Oh, we got the. It, it, I mean, yeah, it, right. Don't go to Mexico, go, Montezuma's revenge. It, we'd go somewhere and they'd be like, oh yeah, there's yellow fever down there, but it's not like the Brits went back home with yellow fever and wiped out London. Like, I'm just curious why. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, no, no clue. Maybe, maybe the pathogen died on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> well, Taylor solved it here. <laughs> <laughs> They're very seasick pathogens. <laughs> oh, they got, but uh, no drama mean in that time for no, the pathogens. No, don't care for it. Mm. I don't want that. Okay. Yeah, no, I don't know. You're what? What is? Uh, I, it would be so tight if they found one of those like super ancient civilizations, way older than like Egypt or you know ancient China. Because well, like, they don't know like, how go, old Egypt is. Like, uh, what is it called? You've brought it up, Ge- Gekli Tepe. Uh, go Blecky Tepe, that place yes. in uh, in Turkey, that that site they discovered that's well over twelve thousand five hundred. That's years really old. cool stuff. That like has this fast that that has those carvings and the, those enormous monolithic blocks that would have required not only someone who knew how to make monolithic blocks, but you have to keep in mind there has to be a system around um, the kind of person who is a craftsman and makes blocks like that. Uglug doesn't go out there, beat something with his club, and eat it, and then go back to the mm. mine that day. Uglug is a mi- this this requires a miner who mines all day as a profession and a craftsman who crafts all day as a profession and a and, and like a religious society who's like yes we must have these things to please the gods and mm-hmm. little peons who are like certainly do right all those things required a civilization uh, of of some like level is required to make those things happen and we don't know anything about those people and Egypt too like the the word that Egyptians use for the pyramid builders is not Egyptian they call them by a different name as a different people. Hmm. Interesting. So yeah, they, they don't some know people, how old do that some people is. think that that like pyramid predates the Egyptians? Like yeah, the really old by ones? many thousands of years. And then and then like the um the uh the Sphinx, like they don't know how old that stuff is. Yeah, you talked about the Sphinx recently, which I didn't know the Sphinx was older than some of the pyramids. That's, they don't have, nobody knows how old it is. If you took someone from one of those ancient civilizations, right, and, and granted them immortality, right? So now this guy is 12,000 years old. I wonder what he'd be like, right? So biologically, let's assume he's the same, that humans haven't evolved in 12,000 years. He's mm-hmm. working with basically the same, you know, wetware that we are. Cool. Would he be a genius having learned things for the last 12,000 years? Would he be a dumbass like me, still stuck on some outdated food pyramid that he learned in yeah. fourth grade? <laughs> still <laughs> eating his 12 servings of grain a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, bread is part of the foundation of this whole fucking thing. <laughs> like, like, would he be stuck on these old belief systems? Would he be a genius? Like, I, I wonder what this guy would be like if he lived 12. I bet he'd be rich. Oh, I yeah. bet, uh, Please tell me you figured out you can just dollar cost average into the S&P. Anyone, it's easy, easy to get rich. It's hard to get rich while you still have enough life left. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to live 12,000 <clears throat> years, God, you can spend 100 years getting rich. It's no big yeah. deal. He could have been the first guy in the stock market. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the first, that's like, <laughs> all right, market's open. We're trying this new thing. And he's the first guy in line. <laughs> but I imagine someone like that would be unbelievably depressed. Like you... 12,000 years of meeting people and everyone you know dying like that would that'd be horrible 
Yeah. Is there a personality disorder that can help you with that? Like, would the right narcissist just not care about anyone but themselves and okay, have, so a, it, have a dandy of a time for 12,000 years? All right. So he's a 12,000 year old psychopath who <laughs> has, has no, nothing so, but resentment for the rest of humanity. <laughs> you just looking forward to the day that we implode. So I that that's a that that um that movie I just linked is kind of the exact thing you're describing um and and these guys are sitting around discussing it with some really good actors that I, I like all those actors. The Man from Earth. Yeah, it's um that one of them is claiming to be many thousands of years old and he and they're having a discussion about it. <clears throat> really, is the whole movie the discussion? I haven't seen it yet. I've only seen that preview. Then it intrigued oh. me. I added it to a watch list. And then when you can you show it that because I think people are going to be curious about what we're talking about. But it, it's from 2007, which I like. I'm, I'm glad it's not from like 1992. Um, this looks cool. Huh. I, I I'm kind of curious. Familiar, I right saw now. I saw a little bit of the dialogue the other day somewhere, and it and it uh, it was really intriguing, well written stuff. Um, because they were talking. One of them was like, "Our brains had essentially been the same as they were for." Uh, over half a million years and that sort of man he would he would learn as he went he would grow as he went but he would also be damaged would he not and then they're like having this this mm -hmm. really interesting discussion uh it's the doctor from uh, uh star trek enterprise they had him a bunch of shit on his face but uh he's a good actor oh this is Wait, the, the, all the doctor from star trek enterprise beverly crusher um that's star trek the next generation you're right yeah i'm talking about the scott bacula star trek oh i don't it was the doctor a um a, you want me to sing the intro music? It's been yes. a long way getting from there to here. And I'm not gonna let them hold me back. No, I'm not gonna that one. I gone straight. Oh, to this the heart. doctor. I don't know if we ever discussed and, and maybe I'm wrong. I, I've talked about it in my private life, but like the guy who the missionary who went to the the island of uncontacted peoples and got I was just thinking of up. him interesting story as well um there's the woman who farted very loudly and like the dollar general <laughs> Can we do the mercenary dude I, have we discussed the missionary the yeah 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 big difference what is it? that is different yeah if he was a mercenary he would have fared better he would have fared much better <laughs> so i want to say it's some it's a very remote island off the coast of india i think because now we're off the coast though like did yeah. you see it on a map i'm gonna try and I think find it's called it. north sentinel island and and these people on this island are like an uncontacted tribe for the most part and it, and they've been genetically isolated for like 30,000 years or something like that some absurd amount of time they're their own people and this dumbass missionary goes over there and tries to press his religious beliefs on these people and go figure they shoot him full of arrows apparently got him in the eye an accurate bunch over there they nice. arrowed him the fuck up killed his ass and now, like, I believe that the U.S. is asking India to go in and recover the body. And the Indians are like, <laughs> no, no, we don't. We call that Death Island. Um, <laughs> no, last time we sent some people over there, we sent them a bit of curry and uh, they never came back. They were eaten. They were you eaten know what we by should the do? We should like airdrop them just modern snacks Jesus. because they would love that. Like, they'd probably be really happy. Or if they just like if they saw an, an Indian guy just like slingshotting them pringles or something you joke someone did that they pull up on a boat to the shallows and they start throwing coconuts at these motherfuckers on the beach and they're collecting those coconuts like it's fucking can't they're like oh fucking free coconuts and they're just like like you know they keep like dropping them you know when like a kid or they're like, so happy with their coconuts in the tom and jerry cartoons the mouse would like keep trying to get all of the cheese and he'd have it like eight times taller than him but he keeps dropping it all and he wants more cheese but he just every time he gets a new piece of cheese he drops two more and it, he, that's how they are with these coconuts that's their culture like yeah. 50 years from now like grandkids are gonna be like grandpa grandpa tell me about about, <laughs> about when the coconut man came <laughs> Dude. Oh, you won't believe it, son. This man came with, with it, it was, if it was a dozen, it was a thousand, I tell you. you know, it's, it's like even coconut. But I mean like real snacks. Like stuff, they can't get uh, Reese's Fast Breaks there. Oh, they, they, packs. um, they didn't even, they had like wooden tools for ages, right? That was, that was the best they could do. And then a boat accidentally ran aground on shore, right? And, uh, I think they... Oh, they, they, a helicopter came and rescued the people off the boat. They didn't even go on the island because they were like attacking them from the island. And there's a reason for that that I'll circle back to. But now they have metal tools. They've been taking slices of metal off of this sunken ship 
for like 30, 50 years now. And just now they have like wooden ar- or metal arrowheads and stuff like that. But it yeah. turns out that a long time ago, like in the 1800s, this guy came to their island and treated them like animals. Right. They're like oh, measuring their dick and, and they're like up. measuring their dick to see how long it is and like looking at their breeding, writing down notes and treating them like like probing them and shit. And ever since then, as soon as a white guy comes to the island, they're like, fuck that. And they just start immediately shooting arrows at him. And this missionary was like, ah, it could be a little dicey, but I'm going to try and bring them the word of God. And they're like, no oh. way. We are not interested in your fake God. And they killed him. God did not what protect up? him. Here's the great like this, coconut uh, in the sky protect us. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a, let me link it to you. But you you probably want to like screen this on a different screen, Woody, because even though it's like Nat Geo style nudity, like you can still see some dicks on there. I'm not sure how strict they would be. But uh, so uh, this is just from a Twitter thread of this guy who is like apparently obsessed with this whole thing you were just discussing of that guy going over there in the 1800s. So the first part, it's just a picture of this dude who's like a fucking foot taller than all these other adults because he got nutrition and wasn't like waiting for the coconut man to show up. But this guy's beginning of explanation is there's a lot of talk about how the missionary killed by the natives of North Sentinel Island. They're probably so aggressive because of this weirdo, Maurice Vidal Portman. So here's a big thread about this creeps and some of facts from my decade long obsession with the island. The Senatalese are often described as uncontact. That's not true. They had a very significant contact in 1880 with Commander Portman. Portman, the black sheep son of some minor noble, was assigned by the English Royal Navy to administer and pacify the Andaman Islands, a job he pursued from 1880 to 1900 with the full measure of his own pervacity. Pervacity. So he's a pervert. I had he's to a process big pervert. the word. Yeah. Uh, Portman was erotically obsessed with the Andamanese, <laughs> and he indulged his passion for photography by kidnapping members of various tribes and posing them in mock Greek homoerotic compositions. Nice. During his 20 years in a sexualized heart of darkness, Portman measured and cataloged every inch of his prisoners' bodies with an obsessive love <laughs> on genitals. Uh, this, is, uh, this is something from the guy's diary. Uh, <laughs> lending support to Mary Louise Pratt's notion of bodyscape and theocolonial gaze, male, male genitalia appear to have been a particular point of fascination. Oh, this is not from his. This is analysis of it. Sorry. Appear to be a particular point of fascination for Portman and Molesworth. One man is described as having, quote, atrophied testicles, both being hard, but the size of hedge sparrows eggs. The same individual is ar- also marked by the observation penis small with moderate size pre- prepus. Uh, another one, penis larger than usual, summarizes a man named Churko. Uh, Tli is described as the chief of interview of interview island and a man of considerable authority and intelligence, but also equipped with a bad temper and genitals that are, quote, fully developed but small. <laughs> <This guy. laughs> See, he's like, he was trolling in 1880. <laughs> uh, just imagine being a Neolithic person spending a few weeks in this guy's rotating uh, menagerie. Portman spent most of his time in the greater Andaman Islands, but in 1880, he landed on North Sentinel. The natives fled, and his party ventured inland to find a settlement which had been abandoned in haste. They, but they located an elderly couple and a few children they were able to abduct. The couple died quickly, uh, likely from ailments to which they had no immunity. The children spent a few weeks with Portman doing God knows what. After <laughs> which he returned them to the island. Portman returned on a couple occasions, but the Senatalese hid each time. The story <laughs> related by the children was certainly passed down among the hundred or so inhabitants of the island. And even today... Portman's fatal kidnapping is just beyond a human lifetime. So when the Indian government attempted contact with anthropologists in the 18, 1960s and 70s, the Senatalese were understandably hostile outsiders. In 1981, a cargo ship named the Primrose ran aground on the coral reef surrounding North Sentinel. The, cradio, the crew radioed for assistance and settled in for a long wait. But in the morning, they saw 50 men with bows on the beach building makeshift boats. The crew called for an emergency airlift and were evacuated, and not a moment too soon. Rough waves had thwarted the Senatalese in their attempts to board, but the weather was clearing. Uh, The ship and its cargo uh, were left at the island, awaiting discovery by Neolithic eyes. Today, you can see the gutted remains of the Primrose on Google Earth. Imagine climbing on board that ship, a completely alien vessel filled with alien things. Imagine seeing simple machines for the first time, a hinge, a latch, a wheel, things that would instantly make sense in a satisfying way. Others would be so incomprehensible to avoid notice. I have never been able to find out what the cargo was on the Primrose in all my years of reading. There are about 100 tons of some sort of consumer product on board, and I'm curious what it was. (laughs) But even absent the cargo, (laughs) think about all the things that must have been on that ship. In the 90s, anthropologists returned to the island to make new attempts at contact. They were met with a different attitude. Not friendly, but they were willing to accept gifts. Here's a video of the encounter. 
you can notice that the these pre-Iron Age people now had metal weapons, like the knife carried by this man. They had scavenged metal from the Primrose and cold forged it into tools. That's it, it, this just goes on for a while, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop there. Am but, I the only one who doesn't think that these uncontacted tribes need to be preserved, like some sort of a uh, fucking Neolithic, t- like like world in a bottle or something, like a snow globe of so you ancient don't times? Think like you think that we should catalog animals. their penis sizes? <laughs> Look, we should go in there and um, and just a expose. confident man, but a small dick. <laughs> <laughs> Weird, he got leadership position at five lots, inches. Lots of power, but That's small, much heart. larger That's than awesome. right, <laughs> but both quite firm. And I also yeah. don't believe that they like walk in there and they see a latch the first time and they're like, "Oh, <laughs> like I don't." You think don't think like, so? Just, if I walk on an alien ship and there's something that I've never even conceived of on there, I don't see it and go. Of course, this is how you do this. Like, like I feel like you need some sort of like teaching method to get you, off, you know, That's like racist. ground zero. <laughs> what? Yeah, I don't know, <laughs> Taylor. Like, I, I, it's weird because I feel like the kinds of things that I would learn from are no longer simple. We figured out the simplest of simple things, yes. like the the screw and the wedge and the wheel and such. Uh, but these guys, they they didn't have all that worked out. Uh, I wonder. I wonder I what the you could totally see something that you you hadn't personally worked out, but you could you could immediately recognize utilitarian nature of it and how and you'd be like ah so that's how that works like if you found a wheelbarrow but with no wheels but when you grab the handles it just started levitating you'd be like oh shit look at this it's a yeah, it's a true. levitating wheelbarrow and to them they see a wheelbarrow and they're like oh shit we've just been dragging things around on flattened out logs since. Time and memoriam. <laughs> <laughs> we were told for thousands of years, you will not improve on the laid down log method. <laughs> <laughs> like this one guy there who crops up every few generations. He's like, God, fucking Ubudo over there thinking he's going to change the world with his latches and his knobs. And <laughs> get this, get this. He chopped a tree into segments, right? Get down. Keep listening. Hilarious. I know. <laughs> Puts a hole in the middle, a stick through that. Rolls it around, calls it a wheel. <laughs> Wait, what? What's wrong with pulling a log, Ubuntu? You too good for log pulling? That's probably what they go through there. He is too weak to pull log. I was they thinking about it. Like, ever think like go? <laughs> at what period of time would you be a genius? Right? Ne- I, probably never. I'm no astronomer, but my basic understanding of stars and Earth rotations and the planets would be pretty, pretty elite at some period of time. Yeah, but you couldn't prove it, right? I feel like <sighs> it, it depends you, if you really put some thought into it. I feel like you could go back to like the early 1900s and you could really get some shit done, right? Like like you you would hire the experts to put your ideas into practice. Like like I don't know how to make penicillin, but I know how to make penicillin, right? It's bread mold. So if I got myself like a couple of like ni- 1897 scientists together and was like, "Look, I don't know when penicillin was invented, by the way. Clearly, I think it was early 1900s. 1930s, I think. Uh, in any case, I, it'd be like, look, there's this thing called penicillin. It's literally bread mold. I don't know what if it's a special bread. I don't know if we gotta like get. <laughs> I don't know if we gotta get some rye or some pumpernickel. I don't know if it needs to be moist first or somebody needs to poop on it. But this bread mold cures everything. Absolutely everything that we've had a problem. Syphilis, say no more. Three days, you're good to go. Dude, I have the same problem of not exactly knowing enough to be useful. Like, guys, guys, exactly. I know that with a lemon or a potato or something, I can make a battery. That's as much as I know. <laughs> so we're going to be poking around with wires and shit for some but Anyone have a small light bulb? We can see if it's working. Also, by the way, has anyone invented wires yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm going to need to go. You know, like, I, I would be, I'm so fucking dumb. Like, I would be trying to, like, come up with a thing, like, and invent the math needed to prove that, like, a star placement there was different. But really, I just have to go to one of the smart people at the age <laughs> and be like, hey, that star I'm pointing at right now, tonight. Remember where that is. And then the next morning, I'd be like, it's over there now. I'm pretty sure I, I know don't know what it means, but you do. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're moving. I'm pretty, <laughs> sure, I'm pretty sure I know how to cure the bubonic plague, or at do least you? the bubonic plague. I, like, I, I read like two different things. One sounds very painful, but it involves lancing the boils and, and carter, ca- cauterizing them. Apparently, that's a big part of curing it. And you'd get those boils in like your armpits or in your lymph nodes and stuff. And the other involved taking the scabs from other people who had the plague off of said boils, drying them out, 
and then the person snorts them. Hmm. And so it's like, like own kind of. I feel like uh, we're pretty close to surviving way. that scale disease in Game of Thrones with Kyle's techniques. There. I, I, I swear to God, I'm not making this up. Like, like, <laughs> like, I want to say I read that like the Arabics uh, had 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 figured out that if they took the dried scabs of a of a plague victim and ground them up and then snorted them, that was like a vaccine for bubonic plague because you're you're, you're getting a much a weakened yeah, a version bit. of the plague. I'm yeah. way too much of a snowflake because in my head, all I can think of is Arabic's racist. <laughs> no, I think it's just yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't think I, I think it's just improper grammar more than anything. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I can't say anything without wondering. I think I referred to Mexicans as Mexicans a little while ago, and I had to process it. No, that one's okay. Yeah, it's <laughs> weird how there's been sort of a derogatory like thing put on Mexican, <laughs> right? All, but. It's because so many people are like, yeah, there's damn Mexicans. Yeah. And I was that like, sounds bad. Actually, that's an appropriate way to refer to Mexicans. Okay, I'm clear. Yeah, I just... Anyway, it's tricky now. I wonder what the next one to go is. Like, when is person of color going to revert back to what colored person was? Where they're like, actually, we don't <laughs> like this either. Like, And then they decide to move that to something new. I just hope Savage American becomes a thing. Oh, I wanted to I think that's an so uphill much. fight you guys are waiting for. <laughs> I, I, I've got my Savage American uh, jersey on here. Oh, yes, you do. I really like that jersey. Actually, while you wear that, that jersey, you're allowed to say it. That's right. <laughs> I, am, I am one of the tribe, technically. Yeah, one of the tribe? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're at least as Native American as Elizabeth Warren. I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> Probably more. You've got high cheekbones. Mm. Not not very dark hair though. No, no, I don't. My mother was blonde, but dad's got black hair. Yeah, a nice little mixture there. I like evened that. out. Yeah, even. I like a. What would your gift be if you were showing up at one of those islands? Like it, it's got to just be something, something that you can carry. How about that? Man, something I that think can... a fucking sword. Like, like first I was going to bring a shield. <laughs> like Captain I, I America's like shield for them. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they flip it over and put rice in it or something to start cooking it. I, I, I feel like. They might a like bat, that. Like a legit sword, like a nice, real chopping sword, or maybe just a good axe, like a good splitting maw or something like that. Like mm. something that's both impressive to look at, clearly alien to them because of its workmanship, and utilitarian. Like if you just give them like a fucking iPad, like where are they going to charge that bitch up at, right? That, that shit is... That is God for three for like twelve hours. However, well, you long need an iPad a potato and some wires, and the rest I don't understand. <laughs> I don't. I think they're gonna have a hard time charging it with a with a low current tater. They're gonna eat the tater like mm -hmm. like halfway through, like charging that thing. They're like, can we just eat the potato? <laughs> <laughs> because but, uh, you can just like give them seeds. Oh, that, you, that you're talking about introducing them to agriculture. That's a long talk when we're drawing in sand. What if you show up with some barbed wire and teach them about the fence? I don't want to bring them anything that they're going to immediately use to kill me in hopes you that I You want to teach them domestication. I think that might be even harder. Is it? You're right. I, after I said it, I'm like, like I'm going to be like, okay, you put the seed in the ground. No, you don't dig it up right away. So then we put the sea water on. No. <laughs> no, you don't do that. <laughs> They're pissing on it or something. They, uh, this is some Jack and the Magic Beanstalk shit. It, it, it's about as believable to them as like that story is to us. I, I think you give them a fucking sword, man. Because I'm just imagining like like they've probably got something similar to a sword now. Like a like 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 they make those wooden swords in the Amazon, and apparently there's hardwood there that's legitimately hard enough you can make like a a mm. cutting implement out of it and kill a man with it. But if you showed them a fucking stainless steel saber. Like one of, or maybe one of those cold steel, like, uh, like, like swords that they make for like zombie defense or whatever the fuck. And you handed it to Chief Nabumbo, and like, of course, he'd immediately go decapitate one of his enemies with it, and he'd love you. Dude, you would start a civil war if you brought one sword, and you'd be on the winning side. No, no bow you and arrow be. is not a bad thing. Oh, a legit bow and arrow. That's how they killed it's the missionary. A compound bow. Am yeah, I saying it right, missionary? Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah, what did I yeah, call yeah. him before? Uh, mercenary. mercenary. Yeah, all right. Now I'm all caught up. <laughs> if you, not even maybe a compound bow, because those like eventually go bad. And but 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 like recurve bows, like like that's another step up in the technology, right? Like you know, they, they've got those silly bows they've got, and then I guess you'd have the long bow, 
and then the recurve bow where the ends go back the other way and it adds a tremendous amount of extra power, 20 or 30% or something like that. And then just a shit fucking ton of wooden arrows, like like good ones. They'd be blown away by that. They'd love that I, shit. I think like what would endear you them the most to you would be like a big cooking set, like a bunch of pots and pans and shit. That'd be so much easier for them. And then like normal knives to cut knives. things up. Knives like a knife big. set and like a, a pot and pan set. Fair they would blue love jeans that. would blow them the fuck away. Oh, bring jeans for, but you know what? Oh, oh, this would be hilarious. You bring jeans, but you bring like jeans that are way out of style. Like I'd bring like Jinko. Jinko jeans from the nineties and I'd, I'd hand them out huge leg Jinko jeans. <laughs> so then when people go, when the coconut man shows up, they've got these enormous big, big leg pants. That I got a better wearing. one. What if, what if like unbeknownst, unbeknownst to them because they don't know shit. You dress them up as the village people. <laughs> you just got a bunch of Indian police officer firemen, like like the whole bit, and, and they're all standing there proud of their new dut, their, their, their new fucking clothes, <laughs> new and you're just like, I don't know, they're the village people. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious. Like you go there and you're the king, and you like teach them English, and you make them like act out American shows. <laughs> you know, this version of House of Cards isn't half bad. <laughs> Very small constituency. Not a lot to gain or lose, doesn't seem, but whatever. I don't know how Frank's going to get away with this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's molesting uh, the kids of the island. Oh. Well, yeah, he's... Got to make uh, it clear to the show now. Method acting. In the center okay, the so on the left is a hyena. On the right is a mastiff of these two. Oh. oh I mean, massive. those are some real deal molars on the... On the hyena. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was. That's where. That's how it like crushes bone. So from what mm. from my David Attenborough uh, uh, knowledge, it, you know, it uses those Wolf back molars back there to just crush bone and get to the marrow. That way, it doesn't matter if the lion is the top predator. There's going to be leavings that only that only the hyena can access by cracking those bones. They think mm -hmm. that's how early man first developed his taste for protein and meat, and sort of took that step. Because like bigger brains need more calories, and they think the only way we would, we could have gotten it is by scavenging and uh, getting the marrow from uh, like the kills of saber tooth cats or whatever the. Fuck. You don't think that it's mushrooms like Joe Rogan? <laughs> I don't think that that's crazy to say, but 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 I don't. It's I, crazy I don't to think say. So. I, I don't think so. I, I he, he he. I saw a short of Joe Rogan today, and, and um, I guess the guys who originally discovered and uh, deciphered the Dead Sea Scrolls. The only one on that team that was not like religious said that it was a, a complete misunderstanding, the whole Judeo-Christian religion, that the Jews were trying to hide their their uh, their practices from the Romans. So they hid what the religion was actually about in a bunch of like fairy tales and nonsense. But he thinks it's about, again, mushrooms um, that that guy thought that it was you know, God would rain and then suddenly these mushrooms would pop up when God sent the rain and they'd eat God's mushrooms and they'd have to trip out. And he, he that, that seems uh, even less likely than it being the word of God. <laughs> 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 like, like truly, it's more likely it's the word of God than what you just said. Well, we see that, but, but we see that in those little cultures, right? Those little shamanic cultures that, that do have like a medicine man who's doing some yeah. fucking mushrooms in there. And that's their religion. He's the one who comes and the guy who's high as fuck is the one who comes out and is like, so first the moon was small, but then a woman, and they're making the nonsense up off their high gourds, right? So I don't know. It makes a little sense to me. Another great job. But I mean, that's why those oh, societies job out at, at 14 people. Like there's, you know, there's, there's all no of us messed up with our career path, but it's because it's clear that organized religion is the place to be. Organized religion is the place to be. <laughs> that is if where you can, we belong. Yeah, that's it, we it really be. is. I wish I believed. I, I truly do, and I wish there was something to, too. more to believe in. I, it would be, be so great. fucking comforting. Give but me some just, proof. Any give proof. me just a little. Give I've me been just on a this little. earth for nearly half a century. I haven't seen a shred of evidence. You got yeah, this just, book where, 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 where God is just popping off all the time. Anytime he sees some shit he doesn't like, he's sending an angel or a flood or some pestilence or some bears. You show me one magical bear. If, if a bear walks down the fucking streets uh, uh, of my Atlanta neighborhood, <laughs> I'll believe. That's all I need. Well, all right. Not any bear. If they're like, yeah, it's yeah. a circus bear. It got out of that. But, but, but like, a magical <laughs> bear shows up. I'll believe. There, there were magical bears. There were murderous bears, if you recall. M magical murderous yeah. bears. I would like a bear that flies. I would believe I saw that. I, I told that story from the the, the Elisha oh, yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
where uh, hey, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Dank, are you familiar with the Bible? Like, or did you just like go to religious schools and like they kind of drilled it in your head, but you didn't? Not they, they they drilled that into my head, but I was just kind of like it's not for me. So yeah. Okay. When I was a kid, I was in the same situation, except I was so goddamn scared of hell. I was like anal about it. Like I got to take this serious. This is real. Like if, and I remember as a kid, like my thought process being like, like the teacher would say something in Sunday school or whatever about like hell's very real and people will end up there if they don't believe in Jesus. And it is torture for all eternity. Now let's talk about Job or let's talk about Jonah and the whale. And I remember like all the other kids, like the teachers, the parents, they just kind of move on. And I would be like, the one person who like was treating it like it was truly real in my head where I'm like, guys, we can't be talking about Jonah. Hell is coming imminently. We need yeah. to be prepared for this. We need to be going for the big fish first guys. And yeah. over like over getting older, I was like, Damn, if a lot of these people really believed this, they would have been acting like I was as a kid. Like, oh, we, no. God, like, hell like, is there. It's imminent. We need to, everything we do needs to be fixated on not ending up oh, in hell. There, what could matter in this material believe. plane? There are people like that. There are people but the who people believe, who told when you me. See them, when, when we see the people who believe, we, are, we stop and go, oh, that's not a real Christian. When, when you see a real Christian, the rest of them in the room are like, oh, he's not one of us. Yeah. Because <laughs> The guy who actually reads that book and does what it says cannot survive in mainstream life the, anymore. Like, like yeah. that way, <laughs> that doesn't work. Yeah. See, see, one of the one of the things that I've, see, I see, I do videos on like Celtic myths and stuff like that because a lot of them are like dying out and a lot of people don't know about it. But there was one story where it's like Celtic myths are things like the Kelpies, which are magical horses that could walk on water. And there's also things like the Nukalave, where it's like this half man, half horse that had like a de like a breath that would just rain pestilence down and all that. But then there was another story I read, and it's called The Gilly Do. Right. Now, the Gilly Do was a guy that lived in the forest and he had clothes made of leaves and shit like that, which is where I see ghillie suit. That's where it comes from. Oh. Like the Gilly Do, right? The guy that was wearing twigs and stuff like that and leaves. And sometimes <clears throat> kids would get lost in the forest. They would come across the Gilly Do. The Gilly Do would say, Well, it's nighttime now. It's too dangerous to go out. Come back to my house. And like the first light in the morning, I'll take you back out. He would feed them. They would go to bed. The next day, they got up. He would lead them to the forest and go, Your village is that way. Be more careful in the woods. And I'm like, why is this a fantasy story? That's just a guy that lives in the woods. <laughs> I was like, see if he was like talking to the animals or like the trees moved when he sang or like moved out the way or there was some... He's a forest yeah. guardian for lost travelers. Yeah, he was like just taking to meet the fairies or something. I was like, <laughs> this isn't a fantasy story. I completely believe this happened. <laughs> I, I completely like, believe there was an eccentric lunatic dressed yeah. in vines who would say i am familiar with this small regional area allow me to assist you but i live in yeah, yeah. It's like, this, this is where i live my forest and, I, and everyone's like yeah this mysterious creature it's not a mysterious creature it's a guy that lived in the woods like, like that's all it fucking was but i never maybe that was an like, early on yeah. maybe that was an early on myth before there was a precedent set that they had to be fun and like th they yeah. just started telling that one and then someone pops up later with the pestilence centaur and then they start moving forward with the good ones because i imagine like look at the roman pantheon the greek pantheon rather they didn't hit that out of the park on the first try guaranteed like they, yeah. they probably had to workshop zeus and the rest of the cast because that's a way harder thing to to hold together than christianity where it's kind of one guy and it all comes from him that's what yeah. I remember thinking that was so cool as a kid and like as a kid being like, obviously this is fake and Jesus is real, but like, man, it would be cool if it was these like semi mortal people that were in charge. I feel like with, they'd be able to empathize with me a little more. With flaws. <laughs> They're yeah. very flawed. With flaws. Yeah, yeah. And I've said this before, but our modern superheroes are the Greek pantheon. Like, like, yeah. like, like it's the same shit. Like, like, and if you look at the powers of those Greek gods, they're about equivalent to a Marvel superhero. Like they, these, they have most of these desires. guys aren't like, it's not like Zeus yeah. comes down and says, ah, water into wine and the earth explodes and you're made of gas now and you're made of trees. Like he can't do that shit. Like, no. like he's Zeus. He's the God of fucking thunder. He can change it. He's got powers, but he's not limitless. But they he's all have to do I with love like all those fucking getting people. laid. Yeah, Some of yeah. them are just every, every Herm meme is just like we get, we get every Greek story could start with just unfortunately Zeus was horny. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like every single one. 
<laughs> That's it is. Every single story about Zeus is like, and then he used his shape shifting powers to gaslight a woman and fuck her, and thirty million people died. And it's like, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> and then all of Athens fell into the sea. And it's like, oh well, this is written by someone from Sparta with some, you know, an axe to grind, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I, I it's funny probably, like thinking how much of history that like we think of as like a, a objective fact is like something that got slipped in there where some yeah. guys like and like like imagine like alexander the great was most likely gay but imagine if he was like a, a fucking conservative priest like pre pastor level like like i'm not gay yeah, i'm gonna suck a dick in front of you to show you how much i don't like it like like that <laughs> level of, of thing like it would be funny if like one of his enemies slipped that in after the fact. Like hmm. he's a great warlord, this and that. Yeah, but his buddy uh, uh, Paris, he was he was fucking him in the ass. Did you hear about that? No. Which, which but this is this is the year three hundred eight hundred BC. Throw it yeah, in. Was it was it was it Nero? Was it Nero that had a femboy? It was. It was yeah. Now, now I'm, that's the right one. It's obviously yeah. not the name I said, but yeah i can't remember it was caligula or nero one of the one of the two yeah. <laughs> basically his wife died and he was beyond distraught but then his little wine boy that brought him his wine he kind of realized you look a lot like my wife yeah you are and my the Lord wife of wine you bring me the <laughs> more you look like it. It, basically, so it was, bring me some wine, it was basically some weird shit where he fucking like made him grow his hair long and everything and was going around everyone and was going this is my wife. You will refer to her by her real name, my wife. And all the Roman soldiers who are terrified of him are like, yes, your wife looks lovely today, Nero. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those, like, no, nobody wanted to say anything. No, everyone total, was too yeah, scared. <laughs> the emperor has no clothes, you know, yeah. moment. Like, it's scary. I, I remember I was reading this thing about, you know, there's that old thing about Nero, you know, playing the the equivalent of the violin or a fiddle or whatever on the the balcony of his palace as Rome was burning, right? Yeah. And I, I was reading this, and this is a while ago. It was some some guy who was clearly obsessed with all these emperors, and he's like, little known fact, that's actually false. He wasn't playing the violin while Rome was burning. This is used to malign Nero's character. And then, like, the next paragraph is, like, he was in the basement molesting children while it burned. Like, and it's like, this is worse. Like, this is, this is much worse than where we were at a few minutes ago. And and uh, I watched um, Graham Hancock was on Rogan this week, and I love Graham Hancock. And and uh, What does he uh, do? Were, I don't know him. Is he a scientist? He's a, he's a writer. Uh, he's this British writer. Uh, he was the one who wrote about that Younger Dryas event where the comet hit Earth 12,000 years ago or something like that. And we had that and it brought us out of the last ice age. And he thinks that it's the that uh, there was a somewhat advanced uh, civilization back at that period of time that was wiped out by uh, 12,000 years not, ago. Yeah. That was wiped out by um, by that event. And he, he thinks that's also why like so many cultures from around the world have the stories of the global flood. Um, because he thinks that the, the, the impacts that came from this uh, this comet strike melted a lot of glaciers, like flash melted them and flooded a lot of the uh, the earth and completely brought us out of that ice Did age. Did they say like where they think the old civilizations were? Yeah, that's in interesting. I've never heard that. Yeah. Oh, you don't know about this? Oh, it's really interesting. No. There's this uh, there's this site in Turkey um, whose name is very difficult to pronounce, where they have these giant megalithic structures uh, and and tooled technology that that would have been used to create them and like modern archaeology states that um those um the people that were alive at that time were like hunter gatherers but these were clearly created during that time period and by a civilization that must have had organized labor which is a thing that that ar modern archaeology doesn't think happened until much later on um but but it would have had you would have had to have like skilled craftsmen who are spending their time learning a craft and practicing that craft, not foraging for food. There would have had to have been another class of people foraging for mm -hmm. food for them. Would it be close to Gobekli Tepe? Yeah, yeah. You you actually got real close. It's like Gobekli. Yeah, yeah. It's it's hard. Go 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 yeah. Tepe or something like that. That's <laughs> the site. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he was he wasn't talking about that so much this week. He was talking about um, the Americas and uh, some of the stuff they found in the Amazon rainforest, where they found uh, evidence of irrigation and stuff like that uh, in the Amazon Amazonian rainforest. Really cool stuff. Um, 
I, I forgot where I was going with this. I thought he was. It you related to him, our last I think, topic. on um, Joe Rogan's podcast. Yeah, I'm trying to think. One of the things he spoke about that sort of related to our last, maybe Elon Musk uh, topic. But but regardless, um, he's he's got a new book out. Uh, maybe the space the travel aspect of it is where it tied in. No, I'm just oh, trying to yeah, because he was out. talking about okay. the the technology to prevent an, a future asteroid collision, and um, and how one of the things that's important for that is for private industry to move forward with their plans to mine asteroids because that's the same tech. If they can make mm. that technology profitable, then we'll have that resource to potentially like nudge uh, an asteroid out of our path. Because if you're mining uh, asteroids, you might be putting them in orbit or something. That'd be cool. That's right? the, that, that would be, I, I don't know if that's possible. I don't even know if that's safe. Like, it, is that the, I wouldn't trust GE to do that. Would you like, like if I heard like, like, so general electric has brought a, Eight kilometer asteroid, mostly composed of titanium and rare earth elements. <laughs> Not on Earth, though, is it? Into our close Earth orbit. If you look into the northern skies early in the evening, you can see it. And well, what if they miscalculate and it, it fucking falls into the Pacific Ocean? Well, no more Californians. I, I hear you. I wonder how. I don't know. I, I really don't have a good grip on Earth's atmosphere's ability to burn things. Like, I know that it burns most stuff, right? Things are hitting us all the time and they never land. If you wanted to get rid of a satellite, just nudge it towards Earth. It burns up, doesn't hit the ground. Everything's fine. How far does that extend? Does that reach mineable I, asteroids? I, no, it doesn't. Um, that, stuff that, that stuff that's several hundred meters big, that stuff makes it through. Like, like, like you see those a lot collide. Like, if it's starting, I think if when it enters the Earth, I don't know what the exact numbers are. But roughly speaking, if it enters the atmosphere and it's a, a hundred meters, it's going to hit. Now, that's not a, a world ending type thing, but something that's one kilometer. I think that destroys an entire city like 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 that's London gone. No, that would like destroy so much more than the entire city, right? Because when you get to a critical mass, it's not so much the initial impact. It's the seismic fallout and then like the dust clouds and things that ruin environments. Am I talking at my so. ass? Does that sound right? I know I would some... be if I were talking now. <laughs> That's it. Well, I well here we are. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just reading about Go Gepli Bepli or whatever the fuck that is. Go Blecky Techie or something. I'm like gonna that, start yeah. reading. This is so fascinating. Get the I book, no dude. Idea. I've got the book on. Uh, I I got it from uh, Audible. All right. Oh, and, uh, Audible it, and get it. I, the the cool. Th so Graham Hancock is is he's got a nice reading voice and he's very passionate about this. He's traveled the world. So so one of the things is like a lot of the stuff that he talks about. Modern archaeologists has really shit on this guy for a long time until slowly they found more and more evidence to support his theories. They found the asteroid craters. They found um, the, the sites like in, like the one in Turkey, and uh, and so he's very passionate about this. But he's but he's been getting shat on his entire uh, career until like the last five years or something like that. And so hearing him read this stuff is great. Uh, Chiz just got his newest book. And I think it's, it focuses more on the Americas. And, uh, and, and uh, he believes that there were humans in the Americas 130,000 years ago. Uh, it's very interesting stuff. Uh, I really like the guy. I have asteroid stats. So yeah. an asteroid the size of a car would burn up and it's not a problem. An asteroid the size of a house would flatten most buildings within one and a half miles of ground zero. So I, did, wow. I would have thought a house-sized asteroid would be not a big deal. It may burn up, but I don't know. An asteroid the size of a 20-story building uh, would leave a wake the size of Paris. And if it's a football field, you'll feel it 1,000 miles away. 7.7 .7 magnitude airport, air, uh, earthquake, I mean to say. And a half mile would be a global problem. Yeah, so I would think that you wouldn't mine anything less than a football field, right? And that's real dangerous. Yeah, you wouldn't think so. Do, are you familiar with the Tunguska event? Oh, yeah. Actually, I just saw it. It's like 1908 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, me, me too. I'm also familiar with it. So the Tunguska <laughs> event, it is, uh, this, this asteroid struck Siberia in like early 1908, and it, it was sort of, no one knew about it because Siberia is a gargantuan, unpopulated uh, yes, the, area. Tuskegee experiments. No, that's different. Um, <laughs> that's, that's when they came up with that harebrained idea of putting a black man in an aeroplane. The oh, Manhattan Project. It'll never work. <laughs> <laughs> the Manhattan Project. That's close. Grease everywhere. So Let's the name Tunguska experiments event. that we're familiar with. No, sorry. The, <laughs> the Tunguska event is where this asteroid struck Siberia in 1908. And... 
it flattened a gargantuan area. It air, it did this thing called air burst. Uh, it didn't strike the ground. It blew up in the atmosphere. Like it, it, it was coming in. It got so hot. It, it didn't, you, it, I don't understand the physics behind this sort of thing, but it went boom. And it went boom like a big nuclear weapon. And it flattened this enormous area. And when I say flattened, I mean 770 square miles of trees laid over flat. And nobody knew about it because there weren't any fucking people out there. And it wasn't until, like, like there's pictures of it. And they, they they figured you know a bunch of people went deaf and shit and their their windows so got, it made got sound. Started. It was very loud. <laughs> the trees fell over and it made sound. No one was there. All right. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I see. I, I got you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but but something like that had happened over you know a major city. It's gone. It's gonna happen one of these days, and it's gonna be. It's gonna be disaster porn. You know, it's it's going to be the worst thing we've ever seen in in our lifetimes, a hundred percent. Like like that, the biggest disaster I think in my lifetime was the uh, the tsunami in like two thousand four, um, that that hit. Um, was it that long? Indonesia, ago? I think it was. I think it was, and it hit into the the Indonesian tsunami. Um, my guess is it's two thousand four. Okay, because I want to say it was. I was in high school when it happened. I think. I want to talk. Um, I'm not sure and if that I'm on like the a same one. Million. I thought I was in on YouTube when it happened. Well, there was a there was another one uh-huh. um, later on um, whose date I'm I'm not sure about at all. Maybe 2010. There was another tsunami. 20, 2004 is the one you're referring to. Yeah. Yeah, 2004 is the one that killed like roughly a quarter killed million over 200, people. Killed over 200,000 people. Good yeah. gosh. Now, how big is the one I'm thinking of? I have like it was smaller, but um, but but I thought it was serious. six it, digits. Am I crazy? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, and then there was the the Fukushima disaster where that tsunami hit Japan and the the, the reactors went. You ever see those South American uh, peoples? They they find their skulls and they did this thing where they wrapped leather bands around their skull to elongate them. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I've seen like that. The Wait, they, they find the they, skulls so like, like, like you do an a shoelace alien. on your finger almost, and like like mm. like like bands of leather. Like like you you wrap the leather tightly around the skull and then you it wet. <laughs> And then it squeezes and it's left on there. This isn't something you do in a day. This is like a, a, a lifetime effort to make their skulls elongate. And so nowadays what people will do, I think it was the Anasazi. People will find these skulls and they think that it's one of those like alien conspiracies. They're like, ah, oh, look, here's what some people say. Ah, oh, this is an alien human hybrid. But then they just do DNA, right? They're like, no, <laughs> what this is, the aliens were coming down and teaching the Anasazi to do things. And the Ana- Anasazi were trying to make their children look like the aliens, which were their gods. And that's that. That so that, that those are you can wa- you watch a couple of those and you'd be like, maybe, <laughs> maybe <laughs> they're also the same people who like put the stones out in the like the the, the plains, like in that in in those patterns that look like mm-hmm. birds and animals. And they're like, you can't see. They had no way to ever look at this incredible artwork they made unless they were in the sky. And you're like, <laughs> That's a goddamn good point. What the fuck? Why were they making those giant birds with stones uh, and shit? Because they had that. coned I themselves it, retarded. If I okay. had, <laughs> let's it's say like, man, that a I, lot of our population is blind and dumb. <laughs> why are we doing this? <laughs> you, you can dr- make things without going to the sky to see. If you told me, Woody, <laughs> I want you to mow your name into the yard, I could do it. Yeah. Well, also, <laughs> like, if you're sitting around doing yeah. absolutely nothing all the time except just like, basic life things and you like sit around it like in a circle at night with some friends and like take some mushrooms you're like you know what i want to do let's take a stone out in the middle of fucking nowhere and 150 years from now people are gonna be like how the fuck did they do this like <laughs> it's aliens like, that's a great idea dude as soon as great this idea. headache leaves all the way <laughs> right? yeah. i have a i have a friend really who's been maintaining morning, a dead spot that says his name and it, it, kyle o is who he is anyway he has his name and his last name with Roundup in his yard, and it's been over a year now. He's waiting for Google Maps to update. <laughs> he desperately wants that thing to be on Google Maps, and he's he's a paramotor friend, so you see it when he flies too. It's kind of honey. Cool. If this ho- yard has to look like shit for the next three Christmases, <laughs> like, I'm just going. <laughs> She's she must be tolerant. He's uh, look at look at this skull. Look look, look how devotion. hardcore they went. Because like I, I know I described it, but. You don't get a good sense of just wow. how far they went unless oh. you see it. It's nice. They look like those, like, there's a movie, is like Spaceballs, <laughs> where they have, like, oh, the cone heads? heads? Yeah. Cone heads, yeah. Yeah, that Dan Aykroyd thing. That, yeah, that was an SNL sketch that turned into a fucking movie. That had Chris Farley in it. 
That's actually what Marge Simpson's skull looks what? like. <laughs> she, just, she has very short hair. It's just like <laughs> dead. <laughs> Man, like, I always wonder how stuff like this catches on. Like, was a, the son of a king born once or the tribe <laughs> chieftain and he had like a long head and he's like, my son is not going to get bullied at school. <laughs> You all have to make your children. We're making this like normal, this. <laughs> but yeah. things get because I, I I instantly started searching for ridiculous stuff that we do, and I landed on circumcision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is ridiculous <laughs> that we still do it. But like, and you know me, I'm not a fan of it. But this is, I'd much rather be circumcised than be walking around hitting the, my forehead on you know the top of doors <laughs> on the <know>? hut <laughs> archway. Maybe their huts yeah. have arch doors, and they, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> like the way doors look when a cartoon character bursts through them. <laughs> it's just <laughs> the cone. <laughs> There's more room for their brain to grow. Like, yeah, yeah but like not correctly. What if like they have an incredible sense of smell, but like, <laughs> but like no ethics. <laughs> like, they, they lose any sort of ethics. He escapes at the end. I think. I think it turns out Hitler was alive the whole time. Sneaks Goes him to out. Argentina. Bat. No. Dark side of the moon. Iron Sky, mm. baby. Um, of course. No, idiots. It's in Antarctica. Yeah. That's where Hitler I, yeah. went. Have you seen Argentina's, the montage of uh, Joe Rogan not getting jokes? Like <laughs> no. Over his head? Dude, he's... Look, I like Joe's show, and, and Joe knows more about comedy than me, and he's funnier than me, blah, 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 all that, all those things, but God, he doesn't get a joke. There was, he's having this discussion <laughs> with, this, with this lady, and um, they're talking about the Nazis or something, and... and she does this really good wordplay about how, ah, you know, you could defend anything that they've done. And Joe's like, what about the Nazis? Did they have a right? And she's like, they did. The third right. And he yeah. doesn't get the little wordplay joke that oh. he's making. Mm -hmm. He goes, I think it's, I don't think it's right. I think it's, I think it's Reich. Jamie, what is a Reich? You know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> what is Joe. a Reich? And it, like, he doesn't know what a Reich, Reich means empire. He doesn't know what a yeah. Reich is. And, it's, and, and she's sitting there like, like really awkward. So the first Reich would have been, I guess, the Roman Catholic Empire or yeah. whatever, and the second Reich would have the been second the second is the Ottoman Empire, yeah. And then Hitler creating the third Reich in the forties, and then you often hear the, uh, the fourth Reich from neo Nazis and such, and and uh, so yeah, that's the there's, oh, really? I would have, there's, there's only so much. Well, well we're, we're hoping we're hoping to staunch that down. And keep, no. keep does does Reich. Reich necessarily mean bad? No, because it, no, like, it just in America be a right. It just, be it's like like right? that Charlie Chaplin mustache, not necessarily bad. Bad today. It's, <laughs> yeah, the meaning you know, has, the meaning has Michael Jack or Michael Jordan. <laughs> the meaning has changed yeah, right. over time, but but mm. Hitler meant it as empire, and we mean it as empire. And you got to go back to a little bit before. I don't know if the dude. Prussians that's a terrible track record of Reichs. Like the first Reich, you said it was the Roman Empire. Roman Cat yeah. uh, I would have been like the Roman wildly Catholic successful. Yeah. The, the, the yeah. wildly yeah. No, 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 successful, the, um, and then and then the Ottoman Empire, the church, not as successful, but wildly successful. Huge drop off on that. I was third waiting one. for Taylor's How third. Many, right, I was. I was. Did you see it? Yeah. The like, we got the first one. <laughs> we got the this second, the second one. one. <laughs> yeah. but that's pretty well, embarrassing. Well, they're not like, like aspiring to empires. Where he's those are the Germanic empires. To yeah, like yeah. Those were the Germanic level. empires in particular. Like, like that's what he's he's aspiring to be the third mm. Germanic empire. The, not just the third in succession because there's many families that ruled and yeah. and it changed hands many times over those hundreds of years. But he's talking about a new thing. Um, right. Didn't work out, luckily. Didn't they? Good for everybody else. Didn't work out so much. Yeah, not good luckily. Thanks else. to the sacrifice of like millions yeah. and millions but of a hundred million european men oh is that ridiculous. correct the why the weimar republic was the second reich not the ottoman empire that was the that was the ruling party that hitler overthrew yes yeah that was in the, the that was post it was 20s, been, 20s and 30s yeah, yeah. Post the, the weakened the, the weakened Eastern revolution i think i think it ended in the right. 20s or maybe even 1920 flat but it goes back to the the 1800s right yeah. If you had to no, go live a, in any that's empire, that's a really good documentary, though. I highly recommend it. 18, it's fun to see empire. Empire. Yeah, there any empire before the year one thousand. Ooh. So it's got to be a good while ago. You can't just pick okay. up something super recent. Wrong question. question: Do I seems... get to be Genghis Khan? No. <laughs> if but so, you get, how about this? Mongolia. <laughs> you get. You're not. You're not. You're not Genghis Khan. You're not even a super high-ranking general, but you're like a lieutenant. He respects. You're in a good place. Okay. All right. Ooh, I mean, peak Rome was probably kind of awesome, actually. That's what I was I mean, going for. Yeah, peak Rome was pretty fucking sweet. I think for yeah. for a lot of folks, 
Or maybe Peak Athens. Peak Athens was probably all right, too. I'm going that would Rome. be cool. 100%. Uh, yeah, Rome 100%. has got to be it. Like nobody they've got else. Toilets. Even, yeah. They've got toilets, dude. Like, like, yeah, like running like, water. You can't say that about everyone. They had hot running water if you're rich. But I think Good you could wine, just be a soldier. Olive I think oil. you could sign up for the army and and eat and and you know have a job. It seems yeah. like Rome w- seems like Rome was a much better place than say sure. five hundred years ago, yeah. fucking United Kingdom. You, you want to be like Rome in the year like three. Yeah. not like not like 433 yeah. like i like, base yeah. this entirely on the tv show spartacus but i think i'd like to own gladiators mm. i bet that would be a stressful <laughs> stressful <laughs> job yeah, based I mean, on what Badiatis had to, to do like, you gotta specify you know what white ones uh <laughs> yes. but like uh, <laughs> no just, they would be from every uh, corner of the kingdom there was a Woody lot of a... sex in that show and everyone was a fucking fitness influencer so but, but would you want to have sex with gladiators like people who are trained to kill you're judging me now and that's you could find cool. sexy whores to have sex with who like don't know how to kill you all and don't the, spend um, all day training to do so every he's i was really talking about them. the he's female staff there sports. were like orgies and all those girls were tens that that one you know what i would do crazy torpedo tits if I were a big like if I were the <laughs> what what was Badiatis called in Spartacus? What is the name of the 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 guy who owns all the gladiators, the glad, gladiatorium or some shit? Yeah, I would want to be the guy like, who's uh, like Proximo in Gladiator, like the Prox- promoter. Yes, 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 yeah, like yeah, that guy. Yeah. I would want yeah. to like be known for something. Like you know those guys with the big nets and the tridents. Like I wouldn't mm-hmm. just yeah. be a gladiator trainer. It'd be like. We got to go to uh, Tayloratus's, uh, you know, whatever, in order to Gladiator get the school. finest uh, net throwers in all of Rome. Like he's known for that. Like that would that would be fun. Actually, it, it probably wouldn't also be fun because you'd have a bunch of dangerous. It should be men. all smoke and near mirrors. Like you should be the the spear master. And you're like just poke them. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he's the best gladiator be- trainer. His trick is he gives them the longest spears in the kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no I want to be like a sword maker or some shit, you know, like someone who was like so good at his craft that you could charge oh like a God. boatload of money for it, you mm-hmm. know, but like you're kind of cool, like whether you're a soldier or a gladiator or whatever, oh, like you got to have, you got to have a Maticus uh, fucking blade, dude. You got to have a Ferodicus oh, yeah. blade. <laughs> I like his, you'd be Maticus Ferodicus is huge. great. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm on board. Steel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be sweet. Living in Rome. But like so quickly, you'd be like, "Oh, this is worse running water." <laughs> like this is like oh, for sure. Ah, ah, they have bathrooms, and like everybody else is like, "Isn't this great? We all get to sit in this room and like sit shit next to each other with no dividers." Like this is so much Hadn't better than everywhere sponge, else on Taylor. the planet. Yeah, and they didn't tell like, me the oh, running water right? here was downstream of the latrines. Yeah, <laughs> at least the, the Chinese latrines. don't you have own to it. Wipe your ass with like a sponge on a stick. That's like, uh, dude, I was in uh, Scotland mm-hmm. last year and we were, you know, touring some old castles. And uh, yeah, when they would to. when they would shit in the third stories of the castle, like the the, the toilet would just basically be a, a it was in a room as far as yeah. you're inside the castle. But the the bowl would just be outside the castle and just like go down, you know, in the air from the mm. fucking from three stories down onto yeah. whatever was hanging out at the bottom of the wall. Looks like Maticus had Taco Bell. (laughs) (laughs) And and, and, and like it was some guy's job, some serf or slave or something to have to go like shovel the poop out of the poop chute. Because obviously you can't just allow that to. to Yes. Look at that. (laughs) Matter of fact, I think I was at that castle. I'm pretty sure really? that, that castle looks awfully familiar. Compared to every other way to shit at the time, that had to be oh, pristine. Are those th- That's three toilets I'm looking at. It's three toilets, it. one at each level. Yeah, one at each floor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. Clever some of those castles are pretty fucking baller, though. They're, they're, they lived all right in there, some of those guys. Yeah, oh, yeah, you always see the stone like interiors in movies, like, just like the exterior you're seeing here, but apparently that was all covered with uh, some kind of plaster that was then covered with artwork. So it would be right and tapestries as like insulation and stuff. But um, yeah, they use like they use a lot of the castles we toured in Scotland as like sets for like period pieces, and so they keep them. Some of them they keep up, you know, looking as they would have looked in the in the period. But like actually, like those medieval 
kitchens. The kitchens in the castles were really cool. Giant fire pits you could walk in and like really cool bread ovens and stuff made out of brick. It was it was kind of neat. Matt, I'd love to go visit a castle. Parking garages seem to be doing well. Ever think about making a castle? Be nice. <laughs> be dope. There's a you can buy That's castles. Some, wow. They're they're so expensive mm-hmm. to maintain that you can buy them a lot cheaper than you think. But then really, you know, they seem it's to like do it on their own. Yeah, it's like a like, lifetime of work to to fix them up. You if you look if you were to like Google like you know castles for sale in Scotland or Ireland and whatever like they're out there and like some of those even some of those folks like people that are like that have like royal titles like lord mm-hmm. or duke or mm-hmm. whatever the fuck yeah. you know they they have the title and they have the land but they're not used to like working and <laughs> they don't want to just get like a regular go to work job and so they have the pay the upkeep on these castles and so they open a lot of them for tours or they'll have part of them as a a hotel or a bed and breakfast you could stay in yeah look at this castle fantastic looking the middle one doesn't seem very castly to me no it's in arkansas this is like (laughs) it's just i was gonna say there's houses like that in atlanta that that look just oh here we go the bottom right two and a half million pounds door scotland 15th century castle hotel Oh, and yeah. Emilia Romana too. That's where the fucking Parm comes from. That's where the prosciutto comes from. That's really? where you want to live. If you're gonna, if you're gonna, I just tried to get scroll castle, down. I'm so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm like, come on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and these Damn. things, you know, they're not nothing. They're like, you know, a million to five or six million dollars. But considering you're getting, you know, a castle, you Hang you on, can get a house here in Los Angeles. In, uh... It's like. Nothing over there that to, in Italy. There to the yeah, one point five million is hell yeah. It's a lot of money. I don't mean to knock it's it, Euro. but in terms of home prices, in terms of castle, lots of we're talking lots about of homes castle. cost a million look bucks that, now. Look oh, at yeah. that fucking castle over there. I want to know about that that Italian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, this shit's one point. I mean, we could pull some monies here and have our set. We could be kings of the castle. This $1 million million dollar castle needs ten million dollars of remodeling, probably. Dude, yeah. I, Ooh, I don't want to read this. This looks like a movie set. This looks like it, yeah. it looks like that you could immediately start like having people come and film there. It looked Ooh, to me like nine hundred k, nine hundred thousand. Click on the nine hundred thousand one. Well, Let's see if we castle. can. They've just got oh, a that's tower. They've got a, there's a little parapet thing up there. That's, that's a, a yeah, home that's a with castle. a turret, and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm, I almost you... bought a house with a turret uh, here in Georgia. This uh, nice. everything was one. But they, oh, uh, they this told is me dope. This shit's was... moving ready. Look at that. This is all right. This is fantastic. Oh, this fucking like this sick. Face. This is really nice. It's got a pool, it's expect... got a pool table in it. Do, do go back to that is... door. He's got a medieval times door back there. But like the 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 one more. Look at that. Oh yeah, yeah. Look at that. A medieval times door. <laughs> I so love it. That, that room is art. great. That billiards room is great. That fireplace. Yeah. You could burn a body in it. Bro, oh, 900 pay for this? Right. This is a right. steal for Actually, this fucking thing. I, in Limerick. It's got to be haunted or something. Dude, the bridge. Look at the bridge that that one comes with. Is that a, is that a moat? Yeah, that's a moat and a bridge, but that looks, that's also a ruin. There's, yeah, look at that. You can see there's a... There's, yeah, there's, yeah, there's, 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 yeah. Right, this sucks. Mind. I don't want to live here. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like, like the castle they, the they rent in uh, Always Sunny when they go to the Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that looks like shit. Yeah, um, damn. You can, I you almost buy a this place. I almost bought this place with a parapet, and uh, I ended up not buying it because they said all the plumbing needed to be replaced, and it was in the high like five figures to get this, just the plumbing done. Mm-hmm. But uh, and they said it was a big deal to rip it all out. But anyway, the guy clearly had a medieval times fetish because he had a giant wooden throne made and put on his toilet. So, so when he, he approached it on a toilet. <laughs> He was shitting on a throne. He like like uh, it was built around the toilet so that you had to lift a big wooden so, lid and everyone like needs get hobbies. up on it. It was That's absurd. So I, I was like, funny. first thing we do is burn that. I, was, I don't <laughs> even want to touch it. It's because it looks like it would absorb poo stink and and yeah, fragments you'd, over you'd hundreds right. of years. Yeah, yeah, it was so things that don't go well together are wood and porcelain feet. is the perfect yeah. material for a toilet. <laughs> yeah. I promise you. Yeah, porcelain. dude, we knocked it out of the park with porcelain toilets. Yes, yeah. a thousand years from now, it'll be porcelain. That. Porcelain, yeah. stainless steel. That's it. Nothing else. Yeah. You know what? I kind of want to do. I want to go to that Sentinel Island where those uh, those uncontacted. Oh yeah, are. yeah. The the ones who are like assholes who like shoot bows and arrows at you if you try to show up and teach them like electricity and stuff. 
but I want to show up with like body armor and like less than lethal weaponry and like bully them. <laughs> That's the way to go. Wait, Taylor should bring his own bow and arrow. Oh, they don't even like, know. Oh, look at you fuckers with your homemade bow. We're talking about you. Bow and arrow. The Sentinel Islands. Remember that guy went and they killed him. I think they shot him with a bow as he approached. <laughs> right. Yeah. You need to go with some body armor and some archery skills and some modern weaponry. Modern. Guns. Well, no, no, not guns. No. I can't have. Now those. you're a bully, that Taylor. Is, don't be a bully. You need a better bow and arrow. You need a crossbow. Whatever it takes to beat the people of Sentinel. We're trying to go in and dominate. We don't want a crossbow because they're going to be too quick with those little stick flingers and you're going to be reloading, <laughs> even the modern ones. We need, if we're going to really just like run the score up mm -hmm. on them, we need guns. We I need guns because but... they're going to be better at archery than us. That's no, all they but, have. But, but I said train, bring... Taylor, train and get better. <laughs> they, they make their own bows. They probably use like deer horns and vines. I've made deer. my own bow before. It breaks when you pull it. <laughs> I remember doing that as a kid. Like, why won't any of these curved dead branches make a bow and arrow? I right, used right. a bunch of duct tape. Yeah. Right. So you're going to go in there with maybe a compound bow and uh, mm -hmm. a sight. They don't have a sight. That's true. You'd ha it'd have to be a range game because you'd have to see them coming. Because they're, that they're on their home turf, they know the wanna, trails. Like, 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 I don't want to kill them or anything. I think we should go in with body armor. Oh, what are we like, talking like, about? Like, like, I was going to kill them. I feel like if you were a no, I was Kyle, Kyle's talking about God complex here. He wants to go yeah. in with body armor that's indestructible and a weapon, a non-lethal weapon that they can't deal with. Is what this is wants. even Ooh. this is even more fun. This I want is the bully. juggernaut armor for Modern Warfare Three. Yeah, I want to go in there and bully <laughs> them and like like blow their minds with like with like some basic technology and shit. And make them think I'm a god, and then, uh, and then like tell them all like crazy, kooky, made up shit. Dude, they already sure. would think you're a god. Look at like they're all probably. I'm gonna guesstimate average height four ten in that <laughs> in that tribe. You six two, and you're built like an Adonis. They're gonna they they haven't seen lats before. <laughs> <laughs> They won't know what that is. They'll think it's like like uh, spirits that are providing like you know, sprout wings. Yeah, they don't know. So yeah, I like um, that idea more than killing them all, becoming their god. But then, what sort of what sort of nice like little trinkets could they even give you? What do they? They don't have gold TV. out there. Or, they, or like like some oysters, maybe. You know, maybe I could just like like Pearls. like. Yeah, if not gold oysters, <laughs> that's the payoff. Oysters. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I love, <laughs> seems you can like get a it. lot of work for oysters. You can get, it, you can get that. They're like eight dollars each. You could go clamming <laughs> out here. The... <laughs> I don't want There's no gold here. There's no gold here. Hey, but there be God. oysters. <laughs> there are two oysters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but what would your what would your first edict be? As Lord oh, I, of the Sentinel Islands, I, I think. Oh, the fun uh, is oh help me! What is it called? Prima Nocta. Uh, yeah. It's the thing we'd all we all say we would enact in all of his fantasies. <laughs> <laughs> the first Prima step Nocta. in pretty much every single fantasy monkey paw <laughs> scenario, genie, magic What's wish. Prima Nocta for the four people who haven't heard us talk about. Wish it. upon a shooting star, birthday candle type scenario. <laughs> well, we immediately go to sort of a Prima Nocta type situation. <laughs> <laughs> well it's your right that's it's right your, as king or as emperor the, i haven't decided yet you're gonna go king or emperor you're not gonna what yeah, else is all there? respect for you the first time I, you take your armor off kyle well well i i think i would like to be that's referred true. to as lord I, I think it has a ring to it lord what about like your majesty i i don't care for that um i would prefer prefer lord or liege because that sounds Ooh, more specific. my liege you don't like dune isn't he yeah. Oh, is it a lot of lords and lieges and and dukes and yep. uh, barons. Well, good. Right, is Baron Harkonnen in there? Is he going to be up to some no good? I think we yeah. can trust him this time around. You're going to like the actor who they got for him, the uh, the the grizzled guy from Chernobyl. He's good. I'm a, I'm aware. I saw the uh, the casting months ago. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'll I'll, I'll get it watched. My I, liege I, is great. That's such a good liege. one. Under underused. Yeah, yeah, that's what I want. That's what I want. I want to be. I don't, wait, no, is that a liege. title, or does my liege mean like person I am like beholden to? Like, I to believe it's the latter. I, I, I believe it's the latter. I, I you believe could be like liege lord. I think that's the name of a magic card. 
Um, yeah, a liege lord is um, like your like someone who has medieval authority over you um, for sure. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, Filthy brings up a good point in that the second you take the armor off, the illusion is going to be shattered. So you're going to have oh, to be prepared I'll, to like I'll, live. I love by that, but that'll be like lunchtime. By then, I'd have, <laughs> I'd have long gotten bored and either left or <laughs> slaughtered them. And they're like, wait, you were going to tell us about antibiotics. And you're like, I'm bored. <laughs> I'm bored. You guys are living in bullshit little huts. I thought I was going to be king. Of, I'm king of nothing. King. Of wait, can you can you make another one of those Twinkies from magic? You asshole. That was my pocket. Yeah. <laughs> I only had It'd one. Be your your empire of dirt. One. <laughs> um, yeah, I would I would get bored by lunchtime and either just abandon them or slaughter them one, or the, one way or the other. I just kind of like the idea of bullying some savages, I guess. And there's that one little group of them left that's kind of bulliable because they're assholes. <laughs> it's like you're getting off your bucket list. <laughs> bully some savages. They're running out of savages. <laughs> that's there's true. There's so few savages to bully. There was a time is, is that when if you, were, if you were a Spaniard and you're prime and maybe your dad had a little cash – and and you had a little sway with uh with the queen you could get mm. yourself a fucking boat and you could you and they were using finish. woody's solution to disease too the spaniards oh the bullying the... those conquistadors put down they were the best at bullying i would say you think so there have been a lot of good bullies throughout history i think that uh, <laughs> I, I think the conquistadors were the greatest bullies of all time or at least the spanish Pretty I think good, the Spanish, they were large. pretty good bullies. And the Inquisition, too, all right? all Spaniards, then, I, then it's just a win. I think the Conquistadors alone. You know, I mean, you know, those, you know they thought that they, when the Conquistadors showed up on those, uh, those horses with the armor and everything, they thought it was one being. They didn't differentiate between the horse and the man riding it because they'd never seen a horse. Or they a didn't see him like, hop off? I, I, I get I, off the horse. The illusion question. didn't last long. Are you sure there were Hillary? no yeah. words? <laughs> talking about <laughs> 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 a very short-lived illusion. Nobody get off your horse. For a moment, we thought it was just one organism, and they just that totally. Wait, it's clearly off. a man on an animal we're not familiar with. Nope, in the history books, you're all retards. Are you sure? <laughs> you have horses at all? Um, I don't think they had. No, there were no horses. Um, I'm pretty sure there were no horses in. So, so here's, I think it's gone back and forth. I think that there were horses in North America and then mm. they went extinct. And then we brought horses back to North America. Um, so I think at the time of the Indians, for example, oh. or the American savage, as I like to refer to them, yeah, there sure. were no Indians. There were no horses. Uh -huh. I'm pretty sure that all the horses that the American savage interacted with, like, you know, during the Wild West and such, were horses that had been brought over by Europeans. You know, I that, occasionally never into it. finish my time on PK and find that some of the things said here were not true. I don't no. think that's right. What? Yeah. That, that, I think that's the thing first thing not true never thing happened. that's said. What? Apparently, Freeman Freeman never happened? A, yeah, apparently um, that's, Have you seen Braveheart? Yep, was, yep. That's <laughs> where they came up in a discussion of Braveheart somewhere. So um, I'm interested about this horse theory. Like, um, do you have any... Gibson wouldn't lie. That's which which part are you curious about? The, the, the part about them existing yeah, the in North extinction America? Of that. I've never heard that before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't have a source like like on hand as I sit here in this like. Yeah, yeah I'm, not right. I'm not. I'm not saying that is necessarily one of the things that oh, may turn I, out to I'm be different. Sure I've just never heard that before. No, I'm pretty sure I uh, I watched a documentary about that. I'm sure Zach could correct me. Really okay. Quick. Okay. Look, now I googled it. The first six links said it was a myth, but the seventh one said that it might have existed. So suck it. I don't. So, I don't know about the wait, wait, wait. extinction. He's talking about. Hang on. He's talking about prima nocta, folks. Like, he's not talking about the horses. I am talking about prima nocta. They can yeah. both be wrong. Okay. That's true. I'm aware. I'm <laughs> aware. Of that. First of all, I had. I never said prima nocta was real. I was referring to the. the I Gibson thought it was movie, real, which I view to be a historical document. Mm -hmm. It says That's right here that historians David Walker and Heckner McKinney said it might have existed. I mean, might. Oh, that's prima awesome. <laughs> Again, prima yeah. I mean, prima it, if it existed, there'd be some... I mean, I imagine that we'd have some, like, historical complaint letters from, from people about the implementation of it. Like, there was a huge riot over at Prima Nocta and... Back then, they just burned Scotland. those letters. They didn't read that shit. Are you kidding me? 
That's yeah, true. And the people who would be mad. Wife. I'm not going to like sit here and like read your complaint yeah. letter. And also, <laughs> like, I do I care? And I'm going to send you an angrily written letter. And also, I was just thinking, right. they, 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 they didn't know how to read. So they just have to draw a picture of the king like deep dicking their wife and then put a frowny face on the top. <laughs> Storm cloud frowny face. <laughs> I don't know what they're trying to tell me. I don't think they're too fond of me fucking their women. <laughs> Just riding into town. No, all killer. The, 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 the interpretation of that would clearly be like, they want us, they want me to make it rain from orgasming on their wife with my <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. Like, they, bring down the thunder, they're saying. Like, all right, clearly they want some lock and load. Yeah, that's they, right. I want to know about the horses, Zach. Help me. Okay, I typed in, did Indians have horses? And the first thing says, horses were first introduced to Native American tribes via European explorers. All right. So, so that, it, it doesn't mention a previous extinction, just that they came over when Europeans brought them here. That is the question. Were there horses in North America long ago? And I believe the answer is yes, predating those Native Americans. I, I don't know no, what makes them so Native. I, like, like, I, like, 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 I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get why we just okay. picked a period of time where it, it they picked they had, there's like a cutoff right there's a cutoff to being a Native American. Yeah, like, 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 yeah. Like, what is the cutoff? <laughs> I don't. I, I, I never thought of I don't this. Know why you're I not mad at point? <laughs> like they walked over here, presumably across the Bering Strait or something. The land bridge. Yeah, and that makes them original. Yet we came here by boat, and we're not original. I'm a purist. You have to be literally the first guy. Everyone <laughs> else, ownership, no. ownership comes from no. Walking, you not need from to voting. have evolved you can't from a monkey in, a boat. in America <laughs> to be a native. If you walked here from someone else, you're, you're an immigrant. By the way, Zach just yeah. confirmed. I'm correct about the horses. They were in North America <laughs> went extinct. So, what is Zach like? Your link to Google. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm not prepared. prepared. I don't have Siri. my tools. Back. What happens? You know, Wait, like, that's says, nice job. <laughs> 45 million years, 45 million year old fossils, a bit before the Native Americans. Uh, <laughs> Aohippus, the modern horse's ancestor, evolved in North America, survived in. Oh, th- I don't, this is boring in the middle of it. <laughs> Just read it. Uh, 45 the modern horse's years ancestor. ago, the horse's ancestors survived in Europe, Asia, and returned with Spanish explorers. The early horses went extinct in North America, but made a comeback in the 15th century. You can't read that? How no, can it you was just spell so well, but not read No, it? no, I can read it. I was saying that I, I, I lost my enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my enthusiasm for the horses no, because he literally like today's me, attention Taylor, it was like he got like payload <laughs> delivery. The important thing to remember here is that I was right. <laughs> no, not according to the bullshit link I have. What? what <laughs> just as this is from history.com. Who would be better? What does it say? This thing I said. <laughs> He's not going to read it. It's too boring to read. Horses were first kind of introduced to Native American tribes via European explorers. That's what I said. Yes. <laughs> so I was right. But I'm saying, so I don't understand. They went extinct way long ago like a an ancestor to horses or they made it to modern horses and then they went away because it doesn't make they were ancient listen it's it's hilarious that you're so smart yet your attention span is so short (laughs) (laughs) the uh how does it describe it the modern horse's ancestor was here 45 million years ago but the modern horse was brought here by spanish explorers yeah. Was that okay. short right. enough? Did let's, I get your attention? Let's, 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 okay. But wait, <laughs> let's, make, let's make sense of that because the question then is, well, if it's the ancestor was here, how did how how what was the continuation of that? All right, so this branch goes extinct, but how did this branch that was the ancestor make it to Europe kind of deal? Is this like Pangea we're talking about? Wait, what is this time frame? No, I have no, 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 no. Pa- no, Pangea was hundreds of millions of years ago. So this 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 involved the land bridge. Yeah, this is like that uh, like Russia. Alaska so, bridge, right? Horses evolved yeah, the went here, down, walk across. moved with Probably. humanity at some point, or just on their own across this land bridge yeah. to Europe, or on their own. Then went extinct ex- here, and they got re. That's that's the, the idea of this. That's not the idea. That's the factual evidence that happened. That's it's what happened. 
They existed Am I everywhere. Learned after this that this is bullshit again. I no, he just looked you. it up. There's fossils of the horses here. All right, so that that's, just that's don't that's look solid. it up anymore after we're done talking. <laughs> and, then there weren't, <laughs> and then there weren't any horses like before the. Uh, Guilty, if you're tired horse. of getting disproved on these things, just don't look into it. <laughs> I don't know why it matters anyway. All I, I just wanted to be known that those savage Americans didn't have any horses until we gave them horses. And that I don't think that, that we should just arbitrarily say like, oh, yeah, if you were born before this state, you're a Native American. Because I feel like I am a Native American. Um, and I feel like my people, the Neanderthals, aren't protected anywhere. And I'm tired of that, too. <laughs> that um, is I true. Feel we like, are I feel like we don't get casinos. We don't even get like a, a video poker room. Like, I'd be satisfied with that if you had, a, if you had enough Neanderthal blood. You, you, you can open a video poker room. Okay, maybe not a whole casino. Maybe not a fucking Harris, but give video me something. poker rooms is done already. What should Neanderthals get? Neanderthals, Ooh, something good, so, but all right? the good stuff's taken. I want to be able to sell um, brothels. Brothels. Boom. I yes. Be able to... Brothels. Indi- Amer- Savage Americans don't have brothels. Neanderthals could run brothels on their land. But you should you know, have I, to be I was at least go, whatever percentage I am. I was going to go with things like raw milk and uh, and like and warm <laughs> eggs, but brothels is just a lot better. I, I think I it, is, it is better than warm eggs. This <laughs> 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 is warm eggs. <laughs> yeah. It conjures the image of like the worst like worst <laughs> cooked diner egg ever. It's just like lukewarm and not really cooked. No. You know, it's a bit. No, 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 no. You must understand. I went this you must understand. Route. Like there, there's certain groceries that like Americans do differently, and eggs are one of them. So we. Sell our eggs refrigerated while nowhere else on the planet does. <laughs> well, you want to? Would you like an egg? It's a hot, hot, hard-boiled egg. It's been in the car all day. No, it's not hot. <laughs> they're not hot. They're just they're just like room temperature. Got gotcha, your hot eggs here. <laughs> <laughs> no they're one's room there. Room temperature eggs. <laughs> <laughs> the hottest egg since ten million years ago. <laughs> it's not so much an egg as it is a baby chicken. My, it's like when you're looking up recipes, Kyle, it'd be like, my great, 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 great grandfather came up with the hot egg on the steps <laughs> of the Mongolian you know, desert or whatever the fuck. It's, it's like, man, how, how much technology would it have taken for one of those ancient races to come up with this? Like they had silk in China, right? Like why couldn't they come up with a, some sort of a wing that would let them like, like take advantage right. of some air currents and, and do some stuff? I'm not about talking about fly, thing. but like if you ever put yourself in olden times and you're like, dude, mm-hmm. I'd be a genius because actually I just know how to use a phone. I don't know how to make yeah. one. I know how to use a battery. I don't know how to make one. I can drive, yeah. but I can't. Y'all make got a, a 350 car. small block needs rebuilding. <laughs> no, you, you'd just be like a shitty Confucius Shit. where you'd be like, one day something like this is going to happen. And they're like, really? <laughs> and like, how? Tell us future one. And you're like, oh, <laughs> I you know, yeah. I, I can tell you more about like uh, hockey stats. That's I saw a, sport a video that's going to be around. Like, <laughs> I saw a video today. It was anyway. called "How a Computer Works." It was forty-two minutes long. Okay, okay, it's boring. You think I'm going to be able to explain it to Neanderthal men or some shit and it make anything happen at all? No, no, yeah, no. Oh, they see the logic and the uh, the fucking binary. And ah, oh, come on, give me that sharp stick. I'll show you how to. Gotta Dude, if you brought a this. phone, that's all I if got. You brought a, if you brought a phone back with you with a magic. English to Latin translator or whatever, ancient Greek yeah. translator, and you showed sure. them the video, they would be pulling your teeth and nails out before you finished as like a witch. There's no way you the, could you no, could I smooth that Greeks, over. I think the Greeks would have been more Okay, chill. the Greeks maybe they, they would think it was cool. Let's go Mesopotamia, way further back, Fertile Crescent. Hammurabi's yeah, I, still on the town. Hammurabi seemed fa- like a fair man. You know, I read a little bit of that cuneiform code and it seemed like an eye for an eye makes a lot of sense. I think the Bible ripped off a lot of that. But I think wherever you go, you're going to have a hard time communicating and we're just not going to look right. Like, like we're going to be too clean. Like we're going to be so clean that they'll look at us and be like, what, who doused you with water, boy? That's the first question. And then like, why is your beard like that or your hair like that? Or why are you walking like that? Why are you shod like that? Like they're all wearing medieval fucking shoes or whatever. You got mm-hmm. Nikes on. They're going to you're going to cause a lot of problems right away. I would imagine they'll probably bully out, like, you. They'll think you're. I, I feel like in ancient yeah, times they were always two. at war. Would he not be a massive, I, strong? I think no, I they just bring out Mo Agrius big... and beat his ass. Well, I'm not saying they'd be intimidated by like a guy's five inches taller. Like three of them would just stab me with forky sticks, right? And I'd be gutted in a, in the street. But like, I think that they would notice right away that we we would stand out for for all the reasons I named. And then they'd be like, oh, depending on the time period, right? 
I bet he's a Mongolian spy. I bet he's a French spy. I bet he's a Germanic spy. I bet he's a barbarian spy. Whoever their enemy at the time yeah. was, the bad guy that they fuck the the warlords like you. That's why I need the money to keep the barbar. Whoever the bad guy is that's that's allowing him to extort his people and and rule his people, mm -hmm. you'd be one of them and you'd be dead in the street. I you 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 start fucking talking into a phone and it's talking back to them. Ooh, that's going to end poorly. Pretty one sure way they're going to hate service. They're going to hate that. They'll worship the phone and burn you. It's the one giving all the orders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's true. They won't understand the concept of battery Who life. Who now will be the carrier of the god? <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you've stolen their soul in that selfie you just took. Jesus yeah. Christ, yeah. Uh, I, mean, I, I do have this part of me that wants to go find those on blow their goddamn minds and don't even break out the technology just right away pull just pull handkerchiefs out of your mouth until you're yeah. their god yeah the little the little <laughs> like red ball thing and yeah do I coin like tricks we'll scare into them right away and let them know that not only can i kill but i can't be killed so i'm thinking i show them some movies of like maybe i show them some videos of me blowing up some cars first right because mm, that's gonna mm -hmm. fuck whoa they're gonna be scared yeah. they don't even and know what a then, car is They'll think it's a tank el hippo or something, and and yeah. then if they think I'm all powerful like that, I think that'll go a long ways into you know harnessing them for the sweatshop. I think you have to go into it <laughs> leading with a lot of gifts because yes, you need carrot them. over stick, huge amount of carrot, enormous amount of carrot. Because if you've seen some videos of these uncontacted tribes, sometimes a guy just shows up with gifts. And they're just shooting arrows with like dart frog poison at him immediately. And so you need yeah. to put in their head like when this guy shows up, good things happen. Like have an airdrop with a big crate of fucking Pringles or whatever you find out that they like. At the same time, you show up every time they start to draw a little connection. When this guy shows up, the crate full of good things comes and you, you have to give them more and more good shit because otherwise they're no, going to think this guy's coming to, to, to try and be the new chief. And we're not you know, going to let him be the sense. new chief. All that makes sense, and I can understand why you would think that that would work. Yeah. But I, I, I actually, I think it might have been that guy I showed you with the python earlier, the bit that bit him. Uh, the guy was telling a story about uncontacted tribes in South America and how this one guy had a knack for like they wouldn't run away from him. They'd look at him and they'd sort of like if he lifted his foot, they'd lift their foot, sort of thing. And he kept bringing them food. He'd make a big pile of bananas, literally, and then he'd leave the pile of bananas. They come, the bananas be gone when he came back. They saw him put them down. He looks at them. He's like, hey, bananas. And he leaves. And they have this going on for a long time, years. They found him one day, full of arrows. Full of mm -hmm. arrows. They shoot these right. seven-foot-long arrows, these crazy the long arrows. Yeah, right out of bananas. Bit, like a porcupine. Yeah. <laughs> bad, no, bad. Okay. So, the, so the guy bringing bananas for years eventually got got. And you yes. think you're going to show up with an iPhone and firecrackers I'm gonna and startle them into submission? I can have guns in South America, Taylor. I show up with an AR, right? I waste anyone with a weapon. First day. They're, I bet they're, they're pretty fucking good with those bows. I, but I feel like you could put on something that would protect you from bows. Are you kidding me? Yeah, like a sweater. I think my motorcycle yeah, outfit might protect uh, me from uh, a bow and arrow. If not, yeah. it's close. Yeah, they're not compound bows. They're it's not shooting that hard. It's for their own good. Mm -hmm. yeah but i feel like that would probably it's end fun. like that last scene in 300 <laughs> yeah. where it's just like arrows just blotting out the sky yeah. coming down like yeah that would yeah that that is what would happen honestly that especially that is it sentinel island where where yes. that's what it is yes those yeah. are the islanders that'll fucking just smoke you and the, if you try to land they're like shooting the arrows like at you actively like yeah come a little closer so we can hit you yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they're good, good for them it's hard to yeah, even get to the gift guy. giving stage because they're shooting yeah. at you before you reach sand that's yeah, why that you missionary do the guy job. tried to land there a couple what years if you had ago that... and did not go well. Yeah, I heard about that missionary guy where he like had in his head he was like, "I'm going to reach these people and talk about whatever uh, God, what whatever, yeah, God," and he didn't last very long. Apparently, you know he thought it? like he thought that they trusted him. He thought that they had a good thing going, and then he just showed up one day for like the second time, and they he never was found. T-shirt well, like the... right. Oh yeah, there you, you go. T-shirt can. Yeah, I'm not going to be on something with t-shirt I'm going to be, I'm going to be, you know, fucking can of soda or or like some baked beans one day or a bunch of potatoes. You're going to fire things. cans of baked beans at them through a t-shirt. <laughs> I hit the chief's son right away. They can't open it. All right, we're going plan yeah, yeah, B. Yeah, Lock yeah, and load. 
yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what. Or, in vein, in, or, or, like, or like you're about to get it and you shoot like the Dr. Pepper over there and the guy like opens it and sprays him in the face yeah. and now it's war, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Screaming it burns. Now they're burns. Pissed, yeah. During this whole conversation, <laughs> at one point, Taylor mentioned Pringles and I haven't thought of anything better yet. Pringles are going to be wildly popular in this place. They're going to love Pringles. They would love like simple stuff, like anything you could grab at a gas station. They're going to love beef jerky. Why do gas stations have like 37 different kinds of Reese's peanut butter cups at this point? It's out. They're just, they're just put different shapes, different sizes, different uh, configurations. Yeah. The they put cookies the in there, must crackers. Must be reconfigurable so they can just. Do it, it, there's no. It's like, yeah. You want to do uh, yeah. brownies in there? Why yeah. the fuck not? You Go know that Coca Cola freestyle machine? Someone yeah. made one for Reese's peanut butter cups, and they're just it, mixing and matching bullshit all the time. It's like so. Mexican food. There's not that much to it. Like it, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you go if you go to a convenience oh, yeah. store somewhere in Scandinavia, like you know, like Denmark, Sweden, Finland, something okay. like that. 90% of the candy is black licorice in some form. It's salted, oh. it's sweetened, it's lemon, it's black licorice in almost everything. But, you know, but bring up the Pringles in this, in this tribe. Oh, yeah. But bringing the up the Pringles sucks. in this tribe thing raises a good point. You know, like, I've been all over the world, and I have eaten some weird shit. I mean, I've had whale, I've had dog, I've had scorpions and horse and you know squid ink and half-hatched sparrows and bugs and all kind of crazy stuff. But to 99% of the world, like we are the ones that eat weird stuff because whether it's an egg or a bug or a weird part of an animal, like they still know where that came from. But like what is really weird to most people in the world is like a Hot Pocket or a Pringles. They're like, what in the hell is this made out of? Or like what goes like what is in this pastry pocket, like Hot Pocket thing? Like we eat so much stuff that is not Mm -hmm. identifiable as to where it came from. Everybody else in the world thinks that is really weird. Like eating a horse is or a whale, like that's they know exactly where that thing came from. But you try to give them a pop tart, and they're like, "What is the like? What is it? Like what is this?" Yeah, that we eat the weird stuff compared to most of the people in the world. For sure, for sure. Yeah, that that I had like, be like, oh, where's Mexico? that horse come from? Oh, the horse comes from that field where we killed the horse. It's like, oh, where does that ingredient from a hot pocket come from? It's like, well, it starts by emulsifying a petroleum <laughs> runoff waste exactly, and, exactly. and spinning it in a centrifuge, adding, you know, the acid until it becomes kind of edible. And it's like, yeah, but it tastes good. Kyle and Taylor, exactly. have you guys had bugs, like prepared bugs, grasshoppers or larvae no. or whatever? No, no, I, no I think not I at all. Bugs. It's not it bad. was oh, zero percent surprising. Somehow, no, they're not. Christopher, you're lying to my audience. And I won't they, they, are <laughs> they are good. <laughs> crickets, bugs. crickets, and mealworms kind of taste like sesame sticks. And like, like bugs are kind of nutty tasting, except ants are like bugs that bite are a little tart a bit. But like, what will really blow your mind is like a big, like a spider, like a tarantula or a scorpion vaguely taste kind of like crab like they're kind of arachnid style so like mm. i get to burn the hairs off of them but they've got a vaguely kind of sweet kind of crab taste to them they're actually not do that you, weird do you burn the hairs off wrap it in like palm leaves or something and, and steam it over a fire uh, the ones i had had been like burned off and dried and they had them on sticks and they were roasting them over like coals yeah so they mm. would kind of burn the hair off with the fire kind of burn them off and then they become like naked and then they would just how much- roast it and we know crab legs are ex- are expensive, Taylor. Very I'm, much. How much tarantula legs cost? I guarantee they don't stack up to a what's nice market snow value? crab leg. What's a, I, what's market I would price pay on? to never have to try one. That's my market. Really, value. you wouldn't want to try a tarantula leg if it was on the menu. They're, they're kind of. I don't crunchy. like spiders. I, mean, I don't want to be around them. I don't want to look at them. I don't want to eat them. I don't want to <laughs> feel it's fucking. It's it's because not all, not every bit of the hair is going to burn off. You're going to feel a little. Like prick here and there of hair on the it, it sounds awful. I don't know. When I ordered the grasshoppers, they seemed to be unprepared. They tasted exactly like I expected grasshoppers to taste. I thought they would be masked by like cinnamon or something, but <laughs> that's not how they made grasshoppers at all. They just put them on a plate. Before I ordered the grasshoppers, and you guys know this because I was on WhatsApp texting you yeah. at the time from Mexico. I ordered ant larvae. And they were out of ant larva, I guess. So Chase is like, did they check under the trash cans out back? Which was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and I got the grasshoppers and they were just tasted like regular. They were like cooked, but they didn't seem to be seasoned or anything. They were just grasshoppers. I couldn't finish my plate. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would imagine the whole wow. point of like, or it seems like you, you like countered or found out the counter to that, but 
how on earth could you just eat bugs regularly without dousing it in cayenne or something to make you forget you're eating bugs? Right. Like it's I, yeah, but it, but to most people in the world though, eating bugs is just normal. You know, like it's not any weirder than us eating a Kit Kat or a Reese's cup. You know, it's just something normal. It's a little weirder. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, no weirder than like you know cutting random bits off of a pig or a chicken or something. Well, well, see, but we, but we we pick we, the pill parts we want. Yeah, <laughs> because you know, if you showed up to a bug eating country and you were like, "Everyone, you want bugs today or pork chops?" They're going to be like, "Oh, por- pork chops are available." Oh, oh then no, thank <laughs> you. Want bugs. Like, whereas here, if they were like, "Hey, you got those pork chops? I got a big bowl of maggots," it's be like, "No, no, you're not going to swindle me. Turned off you're by not going to swindle me." You know, you yeah. buy bug protein powder. It's, oh. it's made of bugs. I didn't yeah, it's super that. high in protein. I mean, they are from a nutritional standpoint, bugs are, are pretty good. It's a How great often experience. are you using it now? Almost never. I know you were really into it. Okay. Yeah, almost never uh, do I use it now. I use it if someone comes over who's never used VR before. I love demoing it for people because I own a ton of games. They were they, The games are very cheap. Five yeah, I would ten. love to try one. And and everybody does. I, I'll always, whenever anyone comes over that, that that is, you know, even if I don't really know him that well, like like the yard man came a, a few weeks ago and, and and he came inside so I could pay him. And I was like, you ever seen virtual reality? And he's like, what? I like, come, <laughs> come here, come here. And I, I just put him in in a game and, a, and he's, he's got a bow and arrow. You mean like Spy Kids 3D? <laughs> and and, and, and he's, I, I love watching like the bottom part of his face because he goes, wow. <laughs> and and everybody start, does that thing where you're like, you look around and you're like, holy shit. I mean, and then you look at your hands and you're like, holy shit, they move. Mm-hmm. And then you like grab something. And you're like, oh, that's intuitive. And, and you know, you draw the bow back and it's got haptic response. So you, they vibrate a little bit. So as you're drawing it, you hear as you're stretching the bow out and it sort of vibrates a little as you're stretching it. And then when you release it, it's, you hear the thunk and you get a little like haptic, like quick vibration. Like push from the thing, like making it feel like it, the tension's released. That'd be really cool. I've often like, like I bet that does sound fun, like showing people something neat. Like I've often thought how fun it would be to like go to like one of those tribes in Africa where they don't know anything and they like it. They think you're a ghost because you're white and like shit like that. And you just show up with like a run of the mill, like couple of pizzas. (laughs) And you're like, this is the white man's gift to you. I am not a ghost. And would I they it like it? I, I eat yeah, the pizza, and shit. I sh- and they would take one bite, and they'd be like, "This is the most calorie dense thing I've ever had in my <laughs> it body." It burns home. the roof of my mouth. How did you keep it hot all this way? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's my special Domino's hot box, or whatever the fuck that thing <laughs> oh, was. Oh. In the car, yeah. Start <laughs> worshiping the hot box. <laughs> <laughs> he can summon heat with this box. Yeah. You know, that would like I thought about that. Like, what would be the things that you would show to? A civilization like that to really just fucking blow their gourd. Oh, it would be the iPad. I was gonna say an iPad. iPhone, but it'd be like awful. It'd be like, check this out, YouTube. Fuck, there's no signal. Trust me, it's really cool when there's a signal. <laughs> Dude, you break out that fucking I thought the pizza. Yeah, <laughs> you break out a big like tablet, like a big Microsoft Surface or, or or iPad or whatever, and you start fucking showing them like pictures of the world, like the like the industrialized world and like videos of like Show them, show them videos of people flying on like I, I those little say, like paramotor. If I brought my paramotor and lit it, no, it, it no, ran into the we sky. Are not doing that, today. that will not be the first thing that they know about the outside world. <laughs> <laughs> no, they would be amazed. They would be amazed at somebody running I to the sky. The white man's video. I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. He just float in air and go. Dude, <laughs> planes are way more boring. Planes are boring. I have a vine tied to a tree. I do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> See, like you'd have to show them something. Uh, like food is what comes to mind because that was what would blow their mind. Because if you More showed them a flight. video of something, not only would they not believe the things they're seeing, they wouldn't believe the method by which they were seeing them. You know, they would be like, is this some other world? Is this where? Where is they like try to reach their hands through? Like, I want to go there. They have pizza. They have more pizza. What you brought. Like, I think you'd have to be kind of simple. Like a ring pop would blow these people's minds. Like that amount of sugar and the uh, catchy. Uh, I think they just giggle. Yeah, they would just giggle at that. Okay, something that would actually blow their mind. Pizza would blow their mind. 
cheese because they don't they never had cheese. Dude, never had nice kazoo. spicy pepperoni. A fucking kazoo would blow their mind. No, they they could do like that. no, like a submarine would blow their mind. A flying machine would blow their mind. A, a car. You give a them microwave. Away credit. A car would blow their mind. An aerosol product. Anything like that would probably. Lieutenant McGumbay's had a helicopter for decades. Okay, <laughs> they are familiar it's with helicopters. Like Lieutenant. Lieutenant oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gumbo. So no, I think you could show them like, dude, a mirror. A mirror would do it. A mirror would blow their fucking. Oh, mind. good call. They've had water. Yeah, it's yeah, not but the same. A though. Is totally different. It's, it's not like the look, same. But... Look right here. You're in there. Who? He has stick in my soul. It would be they would be blown, and you could just reflect the light and bounce it around on them. They freak out uh, like like wonder, anything like that. If <laughs> that kind of society that, you, that we're talking about actually exists anymore, like yeah, it, okay. okay. One, Remember we watched one. There, there's a documentary. Yeah. The guy even went and they they made a shield for him and stuff. That one was fake. Oh really? That's right. It did turn out to be fake. But those people have been exposed to the world before. Do, are there really I, people I that? Like I might, there are people who live a primitive style that that I'll agree on, and that I won't contest. People who've never seen anything but a primitive style, I wonder. No, they do. I, I showed you that video a while back of like the actual like white guy meeting. They were afraid of him for the white man for like the first hour. They were they're across the river looking at each other, and they think he's a dead man because he's pale yeah. and he has blonde hair. They think he's a ghost. They don't, th and he has to like. He gives them like candy or something and, and, and like he's like, you know, food, food. And they like they taste it. And they're like, you know, they're like really like they're like skittering, like he'll skittering, think yeah. that he has them. OK. And they're like on a log and he'll be like, oh, I think they kind of trust me now. He'll like take one step forward and they'll like scamper Ooh. back like 10 feet on the log. Yeah. And then when they finally kind of trust him enough, they like take his hand and like like, like try to wipe it because they're like they think that he has some like paint. chalk or something or paint all over him. And they're like yeah. blown away that that's just. They, the uh, he, he showed them matches. Is. He showed them matches, and they were blown away by matches. And they were like, "Let me show you what I do." And you know, they used the little like saw and like stick, the thing where it's like it's it looks like a, a miniature bow and arrow, but yeah. you wrap the cord around like the the stick, and you sort of saw a fire out. And they're like, "Yeah, this is how I do it." And he fucking knocked it out. This was no Wings of Redemption fire making video. He fucking created fire in just a moment. But the guy's like, "Boom!" fire and they're just like whoa and the guy's like takes the match and of course it burns out and he's like smelling the match and tasting the match and like playing with it and trying to figure it out uh he, he gave him candy and um he showed him a mirror that was one of the things uh they were blown away but showed him a digital camera like like a like a like a dslr that was science fiction for these people it was it was like you showed him a a, a teleportation device it was really cool to see and and yeah. and if he sort of got like the alpha male guy of the group to like, he was the one who's brave enough, right? To like come in and like, like, like meet him first. And like he made a relationship with him. And then that guy would have to go to the others and be like, he is okay. He will show us many things. Yes, yes, come, come. Like, like bowls. They were blown away on these plastic bowls that he had brought with him, right? Cause you know, these guys have clay pottery or whatever. It was mm -hmm. cool. So it, I think, I think in South America, there's still some of those uncontacted super you know never seen the the modern world tribes and they, they're probably looking at airplanes going over thinking that it's the gods or they're you know th that sort of thing yeah i mean they must there's a movie i wish i could remember the name of it about um a group bottle. of native it's where native americans had been like in this like they're, they're like partitioned away from the modern world in america and the only way to get to him was like by going through this tunnel and it wasn't supernatural at all. Um, but, but, but like a couple of white guys stumble upon them and they're like sitting around the campfire with these Indians and like, they're still speaking like whatever Comanche or whatever. And this guy, like that's his area of expertise. And he's explaining to him that man walked on the moon and they all start laughing at him. And it's, it's like, yeah, that's what you do. You fucking laugh at a guy who said he, that, that, that we went up there and walked on the moon. Of course, I guess, you know, you go on the Joe Rogan show, you might get laughed at a little bit. You say that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, like if you showed them that video, like. The, I think he it, showed them so that video. Oh, I the, think in the, uh, the, I think that maybe that was one of the things I, I, I wish I could find that clip. I haven't seen it in like a year now, but I think he showed a man walking on the moon. That would be a really cool one to show him. Yeah. Showing any kind of flight, 
any kind of speed, like a car, oh. any kind of explosion, like That's something like too. a big bomb or gun, like that would that would blow their mind. Freak he them told out. him. He told him this is how the white man wages war because they showed him their bows and stuff. We He's must like, be very nice to the white man. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> He's like, this is how the white man wages their war, and he showed him like World War One artillery guns, World War Two like artillery going off and like huge explosions around trenches and shit and like tanks rolling into Fallujah and stuff like that. And, and that was pretty awe inspiring for them too. Awe inspiring or were they kind of like shit, like freaked out? They, I don't know. It was interesting to see them like, you know, one of them would kind of get it. And then he sort of talked to the others about it. He'd be like, this is how they fight. war. So you see here, you see here, the it was fucking cool, it, you know. It's, it's it's looking back in time, really, yeah. at, at like what we once were. And it's interesting, like even the way they probably saw it was different because they have such a tribal mentality that they probably thought, "Oh, by talking to this white guy, we're cool with all the white people now." Yeah, like Maybe. he's the white ambassador. Like he'll relay this to all the other white. Like that probably is like naturally how they think, you know, because they're they grew up and evolved in those smaller groups like the tribe uh setting all that shit's just fascinating like i wish there were more videos like that god damn yeah. it we, we we industrialized everything too soon we should have left a few groups like but especially you placed. doing it that's like i wish there were more videos of like de-virginizing people who are no longer being created that's a subreddit ah, shit that's true <laughs> yeah but but we're like in a cool era for it we're probably in the only diamonds. era for it, you know, like for the most part, the where end. you can show them things as advanced as landing on the moon, and they still haven't like There's a invented the de wheel. Uh, it was just a joke I was making because oh. you know, but 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 I guarantee there is. Like, I just like, don't like, think people film that very often. I feel like when you graduate do. to making porn, they do, huh? Well, I've, yeah. I've definitely I stand seen... corrected. I don't know. I if I tried to set up a pri a tripod my first time I think she'd have said no. I had this video that I liked from earlier of these uh, these two African men stealing a gazelle from two leopards, and I thought I it was like that. the most. I thought that was the most badass thing I'd ever this seen. This is so, already sounding could, pretty dope. I want to hear. It. I want to watch I, it. I, I mean, it's just absurd. Like 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 stealing we, we, it from two leopards. We're always talking about like man versus beast and shit like that, and like. Here's a case of like our intelligence and just not not even that crazy of a tool. It just a, looks like a stick, not even a, a good stick, like a whippy like, stick, like a whippy stick. Can like, we like start a, it? Yeah, I'm at zero. Taylor, I'm ready. Ready, set, play. Oh, no fear. The cats are unlikely to charge. They hit the ground first to show they meant business. I like that they show a little offense. The like whenever the cats get a little spicy, they're like, "Don't you dare!" Yeah, yeah. If you if you were to just run, he'd be dead. Are he'd there more videos like this? This is so cool. I love their prey stolen. I, 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 the cheetahs will not call the bushman's bluff. <laughs> Look at this guy! What a badass! <laughs> What a fucking badass. That guy looks like he's 50, Finally, the cheetahs can see 55. The like like he's an older gentleman. It's amazing because... I'm sorry, Winnie the Pooh guy. You have been dethroned for the cool ass guy. <laughs> it's this guy. Was he the previous guy? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think so. Uh, yeah, because when he said your I house paid for those tents, I can grab them. Oh, you're right. That, okay. um, I don't know. It's pretty neck and neck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just... like. It's exactly what I said. That the the cheetahs are like coming at you, and they're like, "Don't you even think about it." And the cheetahs are like, "Huh, maybe I shouldn't think about it." He has yeah. a stick with the fuzzy end on it. It's not scary to me. Yeah, he's just slapping him in the face, and like, like he's being aggressive. He's 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 acting like something the cheetah shouldn't. He's fuck alphaing with. And, those cheetahs. Yeah, and in the animal kingdom, I guess that's enough to like. Well, he's acting like something I shouldn't fuck with. Maybe. Well, maybe I'll chase him a little. Oh no, he's really he really means it. I better not fuck with him, and they just believe it. It's yeah, like, and I, I feel like those animals, like like those cats, were probably like, "Man, that's a really tall animal. It must mm -hmm. be huge. I don't want to fuck with this guy." I bet he's really strong. No, actually, yeah, their yeah. muscles are super ineffective compared to what you'd think. <laughs> but yeah, you, 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 you cheetahs, you you could have fucked both of them up pretty good. 
Yeah. And those cheetahs are probably their children are probably going to starve to death now, so that Kunta Kente oh, they can, can catch another whatever that is I, antelope. I, 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 I well, they earned that catch. That. They came in like scavengers <laughs> and just whipped around their their cat toys. You know, I would think they putting fuzzy the iron ends price. on those things would be a bad idea because a fuzzy thing on the end of a stick always gets a cat's attention. That's true. <laughs> That's right. You know what they should have done? One could have distracted them with yarn while the <laughs> other stole the prey. That would have been very clever. <laughs> or a <laughs> <Just> laser pointer. <laughs> a laser pointer. <laughs> now, the local Umbambi use an ancient technique. They use a laser pointer they found on the body of a man they killed and ate. <laughs> <laughs> that's that, that's awesome, though. I, I love seeing shit like that, like people fucking with animals. Like... like I like seeing those guys kill bears with spears. I, I know pe- it's kind of frowned upon. Some people don't like it. I know that's been outlawed some places. A lot of the bears. kills don't go well enough. Yeah, that's that's the that's the worry part that people don't feel like they're um, humane enough. I guess uh, you know the animal doesn't die quickly enough, and and I get that. But look, if the bear catches the man, he's not going to kill the man quickly either. I, I I don't know something about it. I'm just I'm just yeah. okay with. If you're going to get killed by a wild animal, the best kind to get killed by is a big cat. No, because big cats kill you instantly. Like they what don't. they do in their approach is they they'll paw you down, and then once you're down, straight to the back of the neck, you're dead. A bear will just eat you alive. We Wolves watch eat you alive. Different documentaries then, because the ones I see say that all cats, big cats, little cats, etc., tend to toy with their prey and play with it, and uh, they don't necessarily... Maybe the kill shot's quick, like you're saying, but they will definitely fuck with their prey before killing it. Oh, maybe. I think some of the big cats, like, they'll they'll bite you on the neck and, like, suffocate you, like the lions, for sure. Like that's, Lions, that's tigers, the, panthers, the big ones. Um, but I'm sure we've all seen those nature's metal videos where, like, an antelope is down, and the hyenas, like, pull its fetus out and then rip the fetus apart while it's still alive. <laughs> nature's yeah, metal is rough to watch. But, Dude, yeah. nature's metal is my favorite part of Reddit. You don't yeah, find I, it... Is it ever Hard. too much? No, it's always fascinating to me. It's cool to see what animals are getting up to. I <laughs> what they're getting up to. <laughs> I tend to root for one, and it's not always the way you want it to go, you know. And like sometimes I'm just cruel about it. Like I think I saw an eagle rip the neck off like a dove. So now it's like it's a full intact dove, except for the fact that he has nothing but like a spine. Connecting his head, and he's standing there. Have you guys seen this? Are you thinking of the duck one? Where it could, a duck maybe it is a there, duck like, then. Whack, whack, and then it's just, and then it's just stumbling around with no head. No, it's like that's. The, uh, it's that's different cool. then because the one I saw has a head, but everything like around what I'm guessing is what what is the breathing tube called? The esophagus, maybe. Esophagus, yeah. And, and and the spine is gone, so the duck is alive, but clearly not too much longer because it's his spot. neck has been like removed. I, I hope can't that those animals don't, don't like feel... nature as metal. That's so because cool. I feel bad for the animals when they're being tortured Sometimes, apart. You know, yeah. like like if something dies quickly, like like I feel like that's how it should be. But that's just not how nature goes. Like like hunters get a bad rap, I think, because a, hun- a hunter's goal is always to instantaneously like kill the animal if they can. Um, I mean, the spear guy is a bit out out there, but he's doing a whole another thing. And I've seen hunters use a blowgun. Um, like I saw this guy hide in this vessel of water like up to his eyes with this big blowgun already cocked and ready. And I don't remember what he killed, but it wasn't like a rodent. He killed like a, a mountain goat or something. He shot it like in the heart with this barbed blow dart. And if he doesn't hit it in the heart, it it don't it doesn't die. It, it was crazy. But I think you should use a bow or a gun if you're going to go. I Unless it's a bear, because fuck bears. Fuck I have this bears. standard scoring system of, you know, these animals are good guys and these animals are bad guys. And I don't like it when the good guys suffer on nature is metal like that's a penguin that's not cool but See, i don't mind that because like you always have to remember like the the predators are trying to get food for their kids like well intellectually i know that life. you're right but hyenas are clearly bad guys <laughs> <laughs> i've seen the lion king Jim. yeah taylor have you not seen it is we gonna have to put that in the, the wire and rambo 2 <laughs> on your I've playlist seen the lion king. <laughs> I, i've seen the lion king but uh, like well then you wait, should know you hyenas not seen are rambo bad. either no, I've seen Rambo. I saw okay. the first one. Right. I mean, the second was pretty good. You really need to see Terminator, dude. Terminator 2. Oh, that's what I was thinking of when I said it. Yeah. Although, that's a fun set of videos, too. The guy goes to, not uncontacted tribes, but African villages that seem to be very impoverished and gives yeah, them, like, the norm. Twizzlers or 
Jolly Ranchers and stuff like that, like American candies. And they're always just, usually they love it. I like Gushers, mm. you know, Gushers are the gummy candy Ooh, with the juice inside. Mm-hmm. The lady was like, it is a fruit juice inside. It is a wonder. <laughs> and it's just, <laughs> he's like, would you, would you like another? And she's like, yes, may I? <laughs> and she's like, well, you can fuck this chick for gummies right now, dude. You might, she seems into it. Like, like, like how big of a bag you got? Um, yeah, it's, it's dude, if I were that person, people. I would I would show up with so many. So I wouldn't want to, like, give them a taste of Gushers. Like, I would want to have so much that I was, like, making their week where it's like, boom, yeah, he, he pallet pours. of Gushers, huge thing of beef jerky, a bunch I, I, of PlayStation ones, the portable kind all charged up so they can <laughs> they can do get a little bit of gaming in. Have you guys ever looked into the Grand Canyon? I haven't yes, been there. No. I have literally I stood at the top. <laughs> So at the Grand Canyon, there's an ASIN city that was, uh, there was like a cave system that people coughed out. And they found a whole bunch of artifacts, the the same type of artifacts you would find in Egypt. You know, all the same stuff you would find Mm -hmm. in the Grand Canyon. Huh. So like the same kind of carvings. There's a 45 minute documentary about that too from the History Channel. There's so much about history we don't know. Like yeah. I, I would 100% buy that there are entire civilizations that we just don't know about, like that have been buried or you know, a tectonic movement hid them. Like if we've been around for hundreds of thousands of years, like there's got to be older stuff. Yeah, I really I like agree. that uh, that younger those younger Dryas theories by Graham Hancock, like the idea that that uh, comet strike flash melted all that ice and caused a great deluge and that's why you've got this worldwide great flood myth and when he talks about Gobleki Tepe with the with the huge structures that seemingly were built using technology that shouldn't have been around we should have been hunters and gatherers you know clubbing around with sticks and pointy rocks but here are these big monolithic structures that require teamwork and you mm-hmm. can have like a group of you might think well yeah the hunter gatherers get, get them together in a team but somebody's got to be growing food for there to be this multiplication of like effort to food so that some people can just work and become yeah. craftsmen and, and be and have specialized jobs. It's a big step up on the tech tree when humanity was like, yeah, farmer John oh, yeah. makes enough food for all of us. We can do whatever we want. I'm a blacksmith. You'll be the cow mm-hmm. herder. You'll be the sheep Figuring herder. out agriculture really, You're a really boosts everything. You can't stay. Or you can become a special man in a coat actually, who has access to the kids. The pedophile's like, actually, I, w- I saw a bright light in the sky, and they said it was A-OK. Really? How bright was it? I found <laughs> golden tablets in central Missouri. He's going to come back, and like he's going to be like, guys, it was all <laughs> about not liking gay people. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I just don't like penis. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I do whatever you want. <laughs> no, it's their problem. I wouldn't have made myself gay. And, yeah. and, and everyone behind, and he's wearing a crown of emeralds. That's the yeah. worst part. He's wearing the crown of emeralds. Like, yeah, we got so many of these. If you just dig a little deeper, it's all emeralds down there. Well, Johansson <laughs> told you, burn the gays, you get your emeralds. What are you people doing? <laughs> <laughs> Why did they become Italian from... Well, oh, the pub- what are you <laughs> doing? Hey. Fucking Jesus here. I'm discriminating here. I'm walking I'm- on water here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I imagine them in Rome for some reason. Oh. <laughs> now they try and you. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I had two loaves and five fishes. I don't know why you're saying that. <laughs> you're saying that 15 trucks worth of loaves and fishes gone missing. I made this out of two. I don't know what you're talking about, officer. You can talk to Pontius Pilate if you, if you feel so inclined. But uh, things might go poorly for you. <laughs> that's, that's the way it would go. You know, Italian Jesus if, if were, robbing uh, the Romans to pay himself. An American <laughs> Italian <pope. laughs> yeah. is what we're talking about. Uh, what Jesus Christ went through was a bad weekend. Jesus, everybody <laughs> with cancer would trade their experience for Jesus's. Oh, I don't know about that one. Back, I don't know about that one. When you got cancer, though, everybody's like, oh, you're going to be okay. We love you so much. Let's take care of you. I don't know. They're just kind of beating the shit out of Jesus for a couple days. Right? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I... For a few days. Did, I just like, you're cancer, just, you're just rock, saying... The pain, the wailing. You're, you're just what saying, my mother-in-law you're... went through was worse than Jesus. I mean, he is the one that sacrificed for years. Be, being crucified is horrific. 
Yeah. Like they, they did Pretty that awful. because Rome was like, hey, we invented Rome uh, roads and aqueducts and all this modern, you know, political science. What can we put our minds to now? And it's like, look how much pain we can inflict with some nails and two sticks. You know, like, oh, we have scientists coming in. See, it doesn't look like he's in that much pain, but watch him struggle to lift himself up to fill his lungs with air. He can't. It's filled with fluid. That's why he's spitting up blood right now. Like, it was a horrible way to die. But you're right in that if I go into it like Jesus did, knowing you come out on the other end, mm -hmm. it's just like, come on, like eye on the prize. Yeah, Like, focus. just get through to the other side of it. If you're, if you're like, if you're one of those, breathing. if you're one of those, uh, thieves on the side of jesus mm -hmm. you, you that's a way worse death because you well the one thief you know he got to die thinking he was going to heaven and if you believe the lore he did go well no 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 if you believe the lore then eventually he'll get to go whenever god comes back right he's still on the ground waiting that's always been a weird weird thing with christianity is because yeah. like I heaven's some... empty folks it's empty there's nobody up there there's like eight guys up there chilling <laughs> Wait, there's no one heaven in heaven. Doesn't have, no one's gone to heaven yet. No, I think that's not what I learned from cartoons. Like I'm half pretty, a dozen people. I, I don't know mm -hmm. what the actual like canonical. They truth can't is. even I'm play sure a basketball game up there. I'm pretty sure there's lots of people there's, with wings. There's, and there's, there's still angels up there. They could get a game going. Angels can't play basketball. They're just eyeballs and wings. I showed you the picture. <laughs> that is true. They they have no no grip. No, they have to use magic for it. Magic. Yeah, I don't know. It makes you can't more hold sense. A basketball with wings. It makes more sense if everybody goes there as soon as they die. But it is oh, there's oh. a lot more grandeur if everybody does it all at once. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. The idea that sounds is like that, a traffic problem. But yeah. you go to hell immediately, right? No, because what do they say? They say in like God judges you at the end, and yep. so like Wait, you'll stand before Him and bear witness to all yet? your just just the I, devil. I guess not. Just the it, devil it's like and and half is a big lie. I think yeah. it is. I'm pretty sure nobody's what, in hell. They're in purgatory. And, 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 there is no purgatory. We don't believe that nonsense. Okay. Where Get out of witchcraft. In a holding okay. pattern. Yeah. They're just in the ether somewhere. They are they are sitting there in the they're ground. They're in cold storage. In are they conscious? Storage. No, I wouldn't imagine so. That seems like a fate worse than death. See, they have no, they have thousands. You die in like the year <laughs> minus fifty thousand. It's like, <laughs> but you were a good guy, just hold the line. It's like, no. <laughs> 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 you're, you're totally insane by the time you make it to heaven <laughs> you just lost your yeah. mind it's just a whole place full of crazy people I was like, why I did they have to make it their so consciousness why did they have to make it so complicated why could like, like, like the problem one of the, the most the thing that makes christianity so uh, at least a little bit credible and believable is like mm -hmm. god if a person were making some shit up they wouldn't have made it so complicated <laughs> yeah. if someone was just making this up out of like fucking thin air they had to come up with something that made yeah. a lot more sense than it's because they had to keep like layering down excuses so like the pope in the year 1400 wasn't just like dealing with questions and answering shit like within the bible's constructs he had to like take on centuries of other popes lies and fibs he's like this fucking asshole print pope <laughs> hubert the second in the year 800 he said that you know you get a, a, a crown of emeralds when you go to heaven and i can't undercut that now We've got, we've got, we, we've been celebrating Emerald Day for 200 years, <laughs> <laughs> but it's totally made up. All right. I got to, I got to backfill this, you know, mix it. It's a Rubik's cube of theology. I mean, yeah, it is kind of crazy how many different things go into it. And I still crack up because I haven't been, I went to church every Sunday, like pretty much without any real, um, like, like skipping until mm -hmm. I left my house. So when I went, it was weird to me how many times they did a little revisionary, like, you know, mm -hmm. it, let me tell you, it's the same story every year, basically. Same progression, same story. You learn about it. It's very uninspiring by like the fifth time around. But for whatever reason, they seem to change the uh, prayers every six years, the wording, the language, the delivery, the type, like the mm -hmm. meaning behind them all. And I'm just like, you know, if we've done this six times in my recent memory, how many times have we been just fucking around with like this long game of telephone with Jesus? He's just like, no, like I didn't say years. any of this, guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, none of this makes any sense, guys. I mean, he, he's going to come back and like, he's going to be like, guys, it was all <laughs> about not liking gay people. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I just don't <laughs> like penis. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I you do whatever have, you want. <laughs> no, it's their problem. I wouldn't have made myself gay. 
and, yeah. and, and <laughs> everyone behind and he's wearing a crown of emeralds that's the yeah. worst part he's wearing the crown of emeralds like, yeah we got so many of these if you just dig a little deeper it's all emeralds down there well, johansson <laughs> told you burn the gaze you get your emeralds what are you people doing <laughs> <laughs> why did he become italian from well, oh, the what are you doing? Hey. Fucking Jesus here. I'm discriminating here. I'm walking I'm... on water here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I imagine them in Rome for some reason. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now they try and you <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I had two loaves and five fishes. I don't know why you're saying that. <laughs> you're saying that 15 trucks worth of loaves and fishes gone missing. I made this out of two. I don't know what you're talking about, officer. <laughs> You can talk to Pontius Pilate if you if you feel so inclined, but uh, things might go poorly for you. <laughs> that's, that's the way it would go. You know, Italian Jesus robbing the Romans to pay himself. An American <laughs> Italian <pope. laughs> is what we're talking about, dude. I'd watch. That. Did you watch that um, the the series uh, The Young Pope with uh, Jude Law? No, I never watched that. It that's was really about, good. It's modern day, right? Not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Modern day. And, and he's just like about the Pope in he, modern day. I want to I want to go back to when he had power. No, no, he's, power. he's well, he abuses every ounce of power that he has. And he's trying and he's continuously trying to get more because he becomes Pope at like 40 or something. And uh, it's 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 pretty interesting. Like right away, there's like, I don't know, some like cardinal that like is the Pope's right hand man. It seems I don't know much about Catholicism, but he's just like, you know, every this is how things are done. And today we'll do this and then you'll have to go to this. And he's like, I'm not doing any of that. I'm not doing any of that. You don't work here anymore. Neither does he. You, you make good waffles. <laughs> like, like he just kind of takes over and does his own thing, and they and they they can't do anything because he's the fucking pope. It's good. Yeah. Well, I mean, and he like, might be getting laid. It's 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 kind of in the air. I wish they'd done a second season. There was like a spree, like a thousand years ago or something, where every pope for decades was just assassinated within a few years of becoming pope. Or something like that. Like I don't for remember long, the exact uh, date. For a long time, right. it seemed like it was just like a, I don't know, like a job that you could just kill somebody for, or or steal away from them, or give to someone else, or buy. Like there, there was that one guy who sold his pope ship and then bought it back later. Like they went like back and forth or something. It, it, it was it was pretty nonsensical back in the day. I'm not saying I'm qualified to vote for president. I'm just saying that not everyone is. <laughs> all right if you want to if you make the test hard enough i can't pass it i won't argue with you i won't say oh, i am too smart enough to decide who's president i won't argue with you there should be more questions about rome on this test just there should be um there should be a few about rome <laughs> I, I think they're pretty pertinent the fall of the greatest empire of all time there we were with hot running water and then we went to the dark ages and like rubbing uh boiled down horse urine in our wounds for a thousand fucking years so it's a good idea to look at Rome um, if you're going to be voting. I'd like someone who knew the consequences of a failed republic. I'd like someone who knew the consequences of the the, the most powerful um, power in not just a region, but now a globe failing. I was only yeah. half joking, but yeah, it makes sense, especially as America. I think we're the current Absolutely. reigning empire. I think mm -hmm. you could say that. And to sort of know what happened to England, what happened to Rome, how these things get bigger and smaller yeah. and... Mm, well, Rome, decisions. Rome just kept overextending itself towards the end of its existence, funding tons of foreign wars, you know? Yeah, based on what I learned from TV, it was a love triangle going around. I'm pretty sure there was some immigration <laughs> and some uh, infrastructure issues, too. No. I don't yep. think they had a wall at all. Huh. I think you're right. I bet they, they had did a ton have, of walls. They, they had yeah. the Hadrian's Wall. They did. They had Hadrian's Wall up in, in, the, England. in England. Well, because That'd I've be never heard of it, I'm not sure it's true. It's still there. It is. Uh, <laughs> like that's proof. Adrian yeah. himself placed yep. every stone. He did. <laughs> Stonewall Jackson was one of his uh, his uh, first in his command there, <laughs> if I remember correctly. I uh, finished Rome, the TV series. You were then, right. Oh, my God. When you said it moved really quickly, <laughs> I, was, I thought the first season moved really quickly. The first season ended in the way that I thought the whole thing would end. Like, what even is season two? Well, sure enough, season two is pretty cool. And man, those last three episodes covered two a thirds decade. of the story. <laughs> yeah, it was wild. Yeah, it's a shame that that didn't get if that came out now, I, I would bet it would be wildly popular. It's shocking to me. You can tell like when some sort of global algorithm gets triggered by a subject right now, it is Rome. 
Mm-hmm. Like, like whatever that was recently TikTok where someone on thing. TikTok mm-hmm. s- s- like brought up that topic that yeah, I asked my boyfriend how much he talks about Rome and he answered this and then it just exponentially grew un- a- until like Netflix and Hulu started recommending me Roman based things. Netflix is like, hey, here's a series we made two years ago that's like six parts of Roman blah, blah, blah. Okay, why not? Like, mm-hmm. like, there's no way it's a coincidence. It's, it's, it's happening. I guarantee in Hollywood, that algorithm, a, a bell went ding, 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 ding. What's that? It's the Make a Rome movie bell. <laughs> All right. Who, who wants to do it? Like, like it's, being made, it's being made or written right now. The next Ro- like Roman-based movie, it'll happen in three or four years, and it'll be fucking cool. I love that as a historical topic. I love it as movies and TV shows. Yeah. Uh, I wish Gladiator had been a whole goddamn universe. You know, Is was, there like, another empire as cool as Rome? Like, was Greece anywhere near that cool? Or Yeah, I mean, the Ottoman Romans, empire, ba- was, the Romans was stole real? all the Greeks' ideas. <laughs> they optimized them. That's yeah. where, if you see uh, Caesar a Octavian, nice that, that's what Caesar Octavian's doing Like when he's a boy. that His mother's like, stop reading all about those old dirty Greeks. They were all boy buggerers anyway. Now, have you had... Have you had any gash yet? <laughs> <laughs> no, mother. I have plenty of time to get gash. Ugh, a man of your age should have had a dozen slave girls' gashes by now. <laughs> That's like, like what is? I'm what not is exaggerating the much. <laughs> what, what's the joke? Like the Greeks uh, invented sex, and then the Romans discovered that you could do it with women. <laughs> Something like that. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's the, a lot of that. Um, and, and, and the look, Greeks that, actually get like more of that. Like, like the they shame. weren't as gay they have the as reputation people for being- say. Yeah, the, the, like that was like an insult. They would like the Spartans like would make fun of the Athenians being like a bunch of boy loving buggerers or whatever the, the, the words were back then. Yeah. Still was or at going least on. They did in the movies that I've not watched. Not to like what our idea of it is today where it's like, Oh yeah, the Greeks just like totally cool. I, I'm that. sure there's plenty of gay people and, 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 and like getting down in all kinds of ways. The Romans were just perverse and all the way up to their leadership. You know, you would see there's even that scene in Rome where the guy's like, I've heard that you Romans would have a baboon fuck a woman and he's like yes we we sometimes will uh, have baboons fuck a woman i believe you just <laughs> it's no more difficult than training the baboon <laughs> and uh, restraining oh. the woman <laughs> and the guy it's usually reserved as a punishment though and the man is like i would like to see this i would like <laughs> to see a baboon fuck a woman he's like well steps can be taken certainly but the matter at hand is, is, is <laughs> it's just like yeah sure dude we'll get you your baboon fucking like after after negotiations yeah. like like come on let's move along and, even and was, then back in those days i feel like those guys had to have been like really the, the baboon fucking guy like are you no, sure they, are you sure you don't want to go to the coliseum no that, that's what baboon they did fucking the again that's what they did in the coliseum they would have baboon fucking in the coliseum they are right, i don't all, think so all right i love when you say things like this and i ask you if you want to bet because i know you're wrong and you refuse to bet and then zach looks it up and then you go, huh, baboon fucking in the Coliseum. All right, Zach, look up baboon fucking in the Coliseum. There's no way. Are baboons <laughs> at all native to that area? And, and, and no, I, well, of course, they... So let me just say this. One of the flexes that the Roman Empire would do to like keep its people, we're taxing them a lot for this big military we have. It's very expensive because it's an organized military that you feed and like, what do you mm-hmm. do for a living? I'm a fucking soldier. I show up to the post and I serve there for you know, five years at a time. You got to feed, pay, and you pay them in gold, right? It's an so to show the people and to pay them off for this, they would bring back from Africa and from all the way to England and Europe the bears, the lions, the monsters of those lands of that they conquered, the elephants, and bring them home as try and they're during their triumphs and be like, look how powerful we are. We brought these baboons home to fuck women. Nothing about baboon rape. I'm, I'm read it, Taylor. Read it out loud. Let's, Let's bet a thousand dollars. There's nothing though about baboon rape. There's also nothing to actually indicate that the reenactment Marshall alludes to was anything but a dude in a bull costume mounting someone in a pacifé costume. No rape involved, and probably no actual intercourse, given the constraints of visibility within the Colosseum. Words from my mouth, basically, is what I. That's so. What so, I so Google this. We're we're, we're forced bestiality Colosseum. 
<laughs> you're really because <laughs> like I'm, I'm because I'm positive it's true. And if that doesn't work, maybe lose the Colosseum and just do Romans because that was kind of <laughs> like what. I mean, I mean, if if the first thing doesn't work, I'm almost positive that they use this as a form of execution. Ooh, like they would have a horse rape a woman to death. You, you've been you've been taking a bunch of Derek's you know dream supplements. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> this I'm isn't sure something that you had a fever dream about this that you were just excited. To this thing. diet consists of mushrooms and pot. Yeah, I'm mushrooms. And <laughs> they definitely did. That wouldn't know, even but, be like, as entertaining. As like just from an entertainment perspective, do you want to see a bunch of the the Retiarius fighting the um uh you the have shield a variety guy? of things, Taylor? That, like you don't want all of look look different variety channels. is the spice of life. It was just like television. Like one day you'd have women being executed by rape of donkey or whatever, and then the next day we'll have a we'll recreate that old uh what's the myth about the guy who like the eagle comes down and eats his liver every day and it regenerates? Is that is that Greek or Roman? You would think it's Roman because I know they they recreated it. Yeah, I think they the Romans the did. Bird uh, to come down and they do did. It. They did rip a lot of their stuff from the Greeks. Not yeah, even how do you inventing train a bird their... to eat a man's liver. That's yeah, they, that, I don't think that. Yeah, I don't think they did that. I, I bet they did that too. No, because they, yes, <laughs> yes. Zach, I want to also, down. fact fact check that at one point birds were trained to eat men's liver as to recreate. The I can't remember if it's Greek or Roman, but the 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 mythological god, you know, nonsense, uh, theological um, myth uh, of that occurring. Because there's no they way you could the bird's going to eat whatever's in front of it. As soon as well, it's I mean, done with the you, liver, it's going to be eating your kidneys or whatever else the dead guy I, has. We're in not there. talking about what it does later. We're talking about for the show of it all. Like, what does it come down to do? And I I, I say they they trained a bird to eat a man's oh. liver on command. If it was eating uh, out of liver his, out of his command, live body, does it like sure, Prometheus, definitely? Thank you. Yeah, it was Prometheus' punishment for giving fire to man. They they they, they did that to him. Which big yeah. ups to Prometheus. Mm-hmm. Like, for yeah, thanks for that fire, fire, man. Like fire uh, Prometheus was, so was punished by Zeus. Yeah, but 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 did the Romans recreate that? You know, in real life in the Colosseum, and also where are we on this animal rape as punishment? Because I'm sure <laughs> of it. I'm sure of it. Mm. I, I I think you're wrong, and I think we should bet. Ooh. Animal rape is fake. <sighs> Ooh, I, I've seen that's multiple been sources. Snoped. I've seen multiple sources. They with the part. What sources? What websites are you on? Like Motherless, like, like... Pornhub, lots yes! of sources. Yes. Yeah, there was a gentleman on eFucked, and he wouldn't <laughs> steer me the wrong direction. No. no, I mean like like watch. I feel like I've watched not just the Rome TV show, but like I feel like I've watched historical there were no cameras back then, Kyle. Yeah, yeah of course there were no cameras, but there's a like, reenactment you're watching. <laughs> I'm not talking about videos I've watched. <laughs> they were all dressed in togas and shit, man. I'm telling you. And then it at the end, real. some lady came in, got naked, and some guy fucked her. <laughs> this is like... Who's a plumber or something? If I have truly been misled, which I am not admitting until I've done thorough research uh, after the show. <laughs> Admit it. Um, I, I'm sure that I've watched YouTube videos that, that were like talking about like ancient Rome was more perverse than you could imagine. Emperor mm. Commodus would order women to be raped by donkeys for his... Up next, was Hitler an alien? <laughs> <laughs> no, not those kind of videos. I the Nazis' secret uh, occult pact with the devil. I don't watch eight. those anymore. <laughs> <laughs> anymore? <laughs> they, they got you too many times where you're like, wait a minute. No. They just didn't have enough footage to make another Nazi war documentary, so now they're like doing stills and smash cuts of demon and like Bales above heads. I'm standing by this forced animal rape by the Romans as punishment and or execution. Um, I, I or or perhaps as a, as a party uh, 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 favor. Um, I, I will I will get to the bottom of it. Uh, Zach is clearly in on some sort of lie to to, <laughs> to make me look silly. Um, and I'll get to the bottom of that too. I'll I'll root out any conspirators, Taylor. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and 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 do nothing about it. Then <laughs> do nothing about it. Well, either way, Zach, Operation. Kyle Fool is complete. <laughs> uh, one of the times that I, I felt, I remember I've talked about it before, but my teacher just went on and on about the Spartans. And it was this inspiring moment in my childhood education where, where this is, I, I thought of him as my favorite teacher. And it turns out everything he taught me was like sort of lies and not. <laughs> <laughs> what did he teach you? Well, it was the Spartan stuff about the way their lives li- went oh, and yeah. stuff. And, and, and it turned out a lot of that wasn't exactly true. Um, or at least I, I see sources now that suggest that, that it was not. Yeah. Um, so I don't like know. the, the like over the top, like pederasty yeah. stuff. 
Yeah, the over the top, like militarized society and like the agogi, you know, we're seven years old, you're drug away and, you know, you're in the army to your 45 or whatever, like all, all that, all that crazy. And the, the craziness of the, the, the training, you know, that uh, he was very specific about that. Anyway, I, I, YouTube has led me to believe that much of that was exaggerated or just outright lies. Yeah. Uh, Spartan propaganda, it turned out. Um, well, it so could be. I mean, they that lived on to the 20th century. They would definitely want their enemies to then. believe that they were like insane warrior people, even if it was kind of a bit of an exaggeration. They oh, were warrior got, oriented. Don't fire until you see the whites of their eyes. Jesus Christ, <laughs> I knew where that was going. <laughs> but all I see is the white. The... Well, that's what you <laughs> is, Isn't that why? It, wasn't that the whole thing? You see the yeah. light of their eyes, and then yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that way, you know they were um, within range that they couldn't turn around and get away from your firing. Which, like, thinking about Revolutionary War shit, that sucks. It's like, insane. imagine being that guy charging in, and then they just unload on you how because you they they haven't people... established rules of war again yet. How do you get people to be in the front? It seems like the per- especially the- running at things, right? Yeah, like, like so I'm he's talking like, about Revolutionary yeah, that, I'm War. I'm real fast, but that guy's a little slower. I'm going to stick behind him. Mm-hmm. Taylor's talking about the Revolutionary War, oh, and he's right. Yeah. But back up a little more. Now we have short swords and shields or spears or something like that. Who wants to be in the front of this collision? Who or like, and, and, a, a and that's where ladder onto a, like a fucking like fortress? You kidding me? I'm going like 10th. I, I think that I think that the answer to that question is why like when there were instances of professional armies versus like the come on everybody get together we gotta fight armies like it was so obvious like like, like i think there was a lot of pub stomping back in the day when the spartans or specifically or like the uh, or the romans like like came on the scene like later on like like when you had well organized armies that were trained like like you know there's that 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 say what you want about 300 but one of the one of the cooler scenes is like when Leonidas is asking the Athenian uh, or whoever, like like his yeah. soldiers, like like what they brought do? so many, like what is your profession? I'm a potter, and it's just like, what mm-hmm. about you, a sculptor? And like Spartans, what is your profession? And they just go, Haru, Haru, Haru. Dude, know that 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 scene is hardcore. is so fucking and, cool. And, 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 and then with his fucking Scottish accent, he's like, it's not the coolest scene. I brought more stuff, more soldiers than you did. And it's just like, oh, I, I, <laughs> yeah, he, he, literally like Sean, Sean Connery. Yeah. Like, I brought more soldiers than you did. <laughs> it's not the coolest really scene in that movie. Scottish in that moment, they're establishing the bond between Leonidas and his wife, and um, because later his wife is gonna have to be anyway. He's fucking her, but from behind, and I was just like, oh, this is a better marriage than a regular one. Like, I don't, oh yeah, I, he was I, I, I absolutely. Liked the, pillaging that pussy <laughs> i i just felt like they they did a cinematic greatness by showing him taking her in like three positions in a session it wasn't lame they were they were made for each other it's a damn good movie it's a damn good movie i'm, I'm gonna tell it's you a right great now. movie dude the the scene like i remember that this is probably on 4chan like 14 years ago when i read it but they were like you know the, the way that like it accelerates between uh, levels of difficulty for the Spartan soldiers. Yeah. It's literally like a video game. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really is works. like, it's like, Oh, they have to overtake the, the, the charging rhino class <laughs> right now. Okay. What are they going to do there? Oh, they have to overtake the elephant class. What are they going to do there? Like it was great. Yeah. Yeah. It, that's what it is. It, they, they keep coming with bigger and bigger waves, but it's like full of one liners and cool moments. And like, the makeup and the effects and the the the, the CGI, like whatever they're doing with that yeah. whole background. The makeup like, gave Leonidas a six pack. It's what yeah. the makeup. I, fuck yeah, spray that bitch on. You can't just I, take the Rod Butler. And, and, and you know, you know, I fell for it hook, line, and sinker. I'm like, this guy turned himself in from dad bod to Spartan soldier. All right, first of all, he did bulk up pretty good. Like, like he gained some. I he, he was looked absolutely at him more jacked recent. During 300. Look at him more critically again, and you will see that he had painted on muscles. I saw the painted on muscles. I know. I I, I saw it fairly recently. But all the other guys. 
Some of those other guys were ridiculous. All the other guys were shredded. They were it so It depends on how big a role they me. had. <laughs> like, like the smaller if the role, the more jacked they were. Yeah, yes, higher, that's exactly it. Yeah, the yeah. yeah. The, 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 the bigger it's, the <laughs> Oh, come I on. I, well, well, come on now. He looks really good in there. Get this I, fucking I, propaganda off the screen. Get, the, get this out of here. <laughs> he looked a little worse than some of the other scenes are in my memory. I, I feel like I was disproven right there. But um, uh, yeah, it, the bigger actors were chosen for their ability to act. The smaller the role, though, they got to be yeah. fitness models. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Now, the second one really blew, though, um, the sequel. I, and I was excited. I was like, the sequel was horrible. Yeah, uh, there's a you, sequel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 300, 302 or whatever the fuck. <laughs> yeah, three hundred one. We're no, doing it, was, it again. It, it was <laughs> it was genuinely very bad. Yeah, it, I liked it a little more than you, but yeah, I I like the sex scene with Eva Green. Another doggy style scene. I'm sure Woody appreciated. He's a big fan. You got to do it. Uh, Eva Green might be the most beautiful woman who's ever lived. I'm a big fan yeah, of her. Who is that? Uh, she's a actress. Um, she does a lot of nude scenes. Uh, look up uh, Eva Green. Uh, the movie is called The Dreamers. If you want to see her vagina, oh, two thousand three. I'm thinking they, they also have Casino. <laughs> I haven't seen Casino Royale either, but she's in there. Yeah. Quarantine football. Are you familiar with this? No, dude. This is. It plays out a little bit like those group MMA fights. Where like they just absolutely kick each other's ass, and at one point one side has more competitors than the other. Zach, can you share that? And uh, it might be Italy. Where's Florentine? Is that Italy? Uh, probably, probably. Let's go yeah, with Italy. Yeah, anyway, it's ridiculous. A lot of people that that play this sport are felons, and they're all tatted up, and they're tough as hell, and they hurt each other. And it doesn't even seem like football, really. That's not football. He's got him in like a fucking suplex or something there. Yeah, yeah. I was just watching video of it, which of course we can't share. But uh there's no ball. Like they're just straight up like MMA fighting each other, taking each other to the ground, etc. Oh, yeah, I mean, there is you guys a ball. But there's only one ball and like 50 people. The rest are fighting. I forget yeah. that you guys have like when you're football, it's just like you can only push. Because like when when we have like our football or like with rugby, we hmm. you just tackle each other. Like uh whether you're on or off the ball. This looks scary. Some Dude, people are just getting kicked. The people are so scary. Like a lot of these, I don't think these guys are like sportsmen in the way that I think of sportsmen. <laughs> They're just guys who like hurting. Yeah. yeah. Look at that guy. Dude, that <laughs> right? looks like it's a like a color photo from the year 115. Like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like that's exactly what a really good gladiator probably looked like. Yeah, that's Vicinius he wasn't, the he wasn't jacked. Mm -hmm. Like he was jacked, but he wasn't like ripped because he got all the olive oil and all of the mm -hmm. fucking goat meat <laughs> that he wanted. Like we've said that before, and it's like a fun little thing. But like in the movie Gladiator, they were going to have uh russell crowe be sponsored by an olive oil company because that was really common back to, to have gladiators sponsored by olive oil companies because it's fucking italy and that's what they made and like they surveyed americans and they're like that is so stupid like and so they're like all right we're getting rid of this because no one will believe it but like it makes mm -hmm. perfect sense like back then they were the superstars high risk high reward i guess i don't think they died that much no they didn't like you didn't want your gladiators dying because then it's like like, what, what the fuck? Like, okay, that's a huge investment. I just kept this guy alive this whole time. Training. He's, he's making money now. He's famous. Yeah. He's my my ringer, the face of my franchise here. I don't even want him to lose, really. Because I'm applying yeah. it to, like, UFC, which is something I follow a lot. If you have a cash cow like a Conor McGregor, you mm -hmm. really, really don't want him to die. But preferably, if you're Dana White, win. Like, yeah, you want him, you want. like if you yeah. got a Conor McGregor, you sort of transition to him into the guy who's like killing rhinos and lions and stuff with a spear. Hmm. Yeah, it, it, maybe he doesn't fight the young up and coming gladiators anymore. No, like if it, it was, you let them do their own thing. If if they died super often, then they would you did just end up with like heaps of like untrained prisoners just fighting each other, and they'd be like boring as fuck. And it'd be like if us four just started an NBA team. Yeah, be the equipment <laughs> manager. You, know? yeah. I, you don't want to see me bouncing that ball. And then you come up against like the 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 gladiators that be around for ages. So we're just like us four, just like getting dunked on by LeBron, and that's like 
Oh just yeah. More, and then we die afterwards. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah, like, like, that's what they did more often. Is it'd be like, oh, Titus is the super famous gladiator. Well, we're, we're really playing up the rematch between him and Marcus. So, you know, we don't want to do that yet, but we need to bring people in. Okay. Well, we got a bunch of slaves who tried to escape. How about, how about Titus versus, I don't know, fucking 10 of them and they're all chained together. And they're like, yeah, yeah. that's, that's a pretty dope idea. And so that's what they would do. Yeah. Just yeah. exhibition matches where it was like a hundred percent guaranteed. The gladiator yeah. that's famous is not going to lose. And yeah. then like, you're, you're a hundred percent right, Woody. Cause like, People imagine they were all to the death, but like the overwhelming majority of professional gladiator battles, they'd be like, what a fight. Now it's one to one. You got to turn up next time to see who yeah. wins. You know, the and then, they, and then they're like the, the leading ones on the card is just like Conor McGregor beating up 10 people with lupus or some shit like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we put 10 Christians in there with lions. We're not even doing gladiators today. Just, just lions. <laughs> Yeah, Man, that dickhead's is, being eaten. <laughs> so that would be gruesome to watch. But I guess, yeah. like, if that's all you had, and everybody thought it was normal, it would be very easy to just be like, "Yeah, this is what you do." I did read one one account of um, when they first um, uh, conquered the um, um, Carthage or wh wherever they got the fucking elephants from. You know, they brought the elephants yeah. to Rome, and uh, and they they had like a bunch of elephants, like I don't know how I many, dozens, and they, they're slaughtering these elephants. And apparently the elephants are like looking toward the crowd, clearly asking for help. And the people Aww. are and the people start crying. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> they're like, this was an example of the hardened Roman gladiatorial audience for once showing a bit of heart and begging <laughs> for mercy for the elephants because the elephants were clearly asking them for help. <laughs> <laughs> bring, oh, back the, wow. bring back the Christians, save the elephants. <laughs> you just know that was like the modern like hippie. They're like, bring back the Christians, man. The elephants didn't do anything to you. And it's like, man, <laughs> you, know, you want to sign this petition, bro? <laughs> no, fuck you. <laughs> it's, it's written on Christian skin. Yeah, they, <laughs> they would. The peace loving hippies of the day like yeah. loved watching. They, they were yeah. talking about all the different ways they would execute people. Like, because they, you know, after a while, you're you're tired of burnings or hangings or, or, or impalements. And like, like like one guy, they just like crucified and then sicked a falcon on him and had the falcon kill him. And like oh. so so slowly, <laughs> so slowly, a falcon is just pecking oh. his eyes and jugular until he's dead. You have enough time to like think about perhaps escaping and then like a few minutes of actively wishing for death. What a horrible oh, yeah. way to die. It yeah. goes for your eyes first because it's a bird. And you're and you know you at, for a while you're dodging, right? You're like, ah, I got the oh, he got me. Yeah. He got me. Oh no. He's quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like some sort of raptor. <laughs> Oh, that would and, be, know, be the worst as well because you're like nailed up and every time you dodge you're like pulling on your hands he's like oh, no, 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 shit. dude that was a brutal way to kill people crucifixion Look, and when they'd be like all right we're gonna uh yeah how about one person every uh i don't know 50 yards all the way to rome like with uh oh, like, yeah. uh, the Sparta or the spart uh, not Spartans, but the spartacus revel uh that was the third uh, slave war. I, after watching Spartacus most recently, like a year ago, I got into like reading about like the first and second ones. And the reason you don't hear about the first and second ones is like it did not go well for the slaves. Like Spartacus is, was the first one where it was like, OK, like this is this is going well. Eventually that went really shit, too, because we all finished the series and they didn't. Uh, you know, they didn't yeah, exactly the total the desolation. You know, yeah. you, that's, you right. like, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the historical. Yeah. <laughs> you like the I went to the uh to the Colosseum while we we're in Rome, mm. and that really cool. it is so much bigger than you think it will be. Like I expected it to be like small. This is like an eighty thousand person arena. Like Dude, it's, yeah. it's huge. Massive. It's cool, isn't it? I I, yeah. I really like standing in history. Like it's a yeah, big yeah. deal to me, and and. I, I really enjoyed lame history. I, I once stood in a place where American Indians washed their clothes. And I was yeah. like, this is kind of neat. It was like sort of like a paved and you can tell there used to be water running. Mm -hmm. there. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't paved, but it was like paved with rocks. And uh, I could just imagine a social scene happening where all the women take like, you know, more laundry than just theirs and clean it and hang out with each other and shoot the shit and whatever. Sure. And I was like, wow. So that happened right here. 200 years ago to 20,000 years ago or whatever, 200,000 years ago. I, I don't, these numbers mean nothing to me, but, but like however long native Americans were here, like yeah. just washing shit and living that life. Cool. Cool. Too bad. They know how to like, call uh, 
You go to the Coliseum, though, it's a bigger deal. Like, there's 80,000 people that were in here. Didn't they flood it and have, like, naval battles in it or something? Yeah, they did. They they flooded the base of it, yeah. And that was, so it was was completed in 50 AD. So it was, like, like almost 2,000 years ago. Yeah. The reason they flooded it and had the naval battle, it's the whole thing is a mega flex. They're recreating one of their great victories over a rival, an opponent, another country. They're not just like, hey, maybe it'd be neat if there's a naval battle. They're saying, hey, remember that time we shit on Macedonia? Let me show you how it went. And they're yeah. making people fight to the death yeah. to recreate it. Or I don't think they died. Remember when we that fucked up Cyrus of Persia? Right. Here, we yeah. just Here got he a, is. We, we just got an accused rapist and put Cyrus's yeah. headdress on him. And no, now that's Cyrus. They would have I, I, Cyrus. They would fucking yeah. have Cyrus. That's the best part. When those when those well, Roman not, generals not would roll back into town, when when Caesar would roll back into town. Part of the procession would be the fucking captured king and queen or, and all the fucking royal family of whoever, wherever they just came from and a bunch of slaves and shit. And they, they'd execute the fucking king of whoever they just conquered in the goddamn uh, Coliseum in horrific yeah. ways. Was it Marcus Aurelius who would like have someone ride next yes. to him who was like, yeah, uh, or no, it was Julius Caesar. It was right, Caesar right. who had someone ride next to man. him. <laughs> yeah. would say, like, Fuck, you are you laid a trap? <laughs> yeah, no, no. You, you, Slush, exa- Slush knew exactly where I was going. Where like, yeah. like as Julius Caesar would ride through his chariot through the people yeah. of Rome, everyone was so addicted to Julius Caesar. Like they loved him that he would have someone behind him who would talk to him the whole time and just say like, you're only a man. But it's but you're it only work, a man. Right? You're work. only a man. <laughs> And I, it I went did to not, the place. It didn't, uh, it didn't stick. I went to the really? place where Julius Caesar was stabbed. It. It was okay. So uh, the um, it's like ruins there, but it's like in the middle of Rome. So it's like it's it's like a city block that is just like dropped down because like a lot of the city sort of built up over time. It's like a drop down thing, and you can see where like Caesar was stabbed and shit like that. But instead of like making it into like you can walk all over it because it's like really old ruins. They put up like fences around it and they were like, oh yeah, we're going to keep this so you can look in from the outside. And because <laughs> there's, there was nothing there, just like fuckloads of stray cats moved in there. So yeah. they made it into like a, a cat sanctuary. So now sure. there's just like, you go to where Julius Caesar was stabbed and there's just fucking <laughs> hundreds of cats. <laughs> and they're like, and they're like fucking adopted cats that are like the, the yeah. people there look after them. So you got like, Every cat has like missing an eye or missing a leg or it's like Jesus. fucked up in some way. So you just like sit there. I'm here like, for history. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is this is so amazing. Julius Caesar was stabbed here two thousand years ago, and now there's a, a three legged cat licking his balls on that spot. <laughs> it's like our America's so young. I've been to the Alamo, and that was you know whatever hundred like hundred years ago, fifty years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And and oh my god, it's falling apart. There ain't nothing to see there. I was so really? upset that we. I was like, I got hot and sweaty for this. Like, what is this? Yeah, there must be rubble. Walls. It's. I remember there was one part in particular that was there was most of a wall and an archway, maybe, and that was like it. Like that's like so little that it's not worth going. Like genuinely it, not. It doesn't worth have going. like four walls and a fort in the middle. No. So it was a big thing. The Alamo. You got to keep in mind it was a big missionary. You okay. see this tiny little bit of rubble. It is a fucking jip. It is a tourist yeah, trap. Nonsense. Gone. Yeah, yeah. The, the best I've heard people Europe say that that they're like, like uh, it's ninety percent gone. Like it, everything yeah. you see is a reconstruction of what it probably looked like, and it's like, well, that's not cool. I can see scaffolding. Yeah. Don't go. To the, the best bit about when you go to Europe is like you walk into a bar and it's still operating, and then you look at like when it was built, and it's like, wow, this was this bar has been here for like seven hundred years before my country even existed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. dude. There's a hotel. I, I was on some Wikipedia page like years ago trying to find like the oldest still existing build or uh companies and there's a hotel in japan that's been open for like 14 1500 years and it's crazy it's like a a thousand years ago they'd been in business for half a millennia that's bananas like the amount of people over time like whose entire lives were spent working there and like you just it's no one it's cares. Crazy. It like, no you don't even think about it. The same way, like no one will think about us. Like the yeah, it's bizarre. I, I love how uh, like the you go to like the old places in in uh, Italy, and it's like there's always like graffiti on the walls from like two thousand years ago. And so like Pompeii, because it was like perfectly preserved, it's just like fuckloads of like dicks drawn on the walls and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. Like people just fucking in weird positions, and then like a guy like walking like that. And then he's got like a fucking five foot long cock coming out from under his little Roman skirt and shit. 
and that and it's just still there. It's like, yeah. wow, that, we I have know, not like, changed much. Back in the day, some <laughs> some woman was like, Julius, wow. don't you go and paint that on the wall. You're making a fool of us in the neighborhood. Yeah. And now, like, little Julius's big dicked drawing. Now it's there. Yeah. There's yeah, a famous one. I don't I don't know where it is, but the guy is writing this whole thing. He's saying something like, so long, ladies. You had your chance. My penis will will pleasure men's behinds from now on. See how you like that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's literally him being like, you know what? Fuck you, women. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I mean, find me a lady boy. The, 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 the very word, first uh, insult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have you seen the one where it's like a papyrus script and it's like a, a customer complaint? It's like carved into oh. a stone tablet. Yeah, the quality like, of his copper yeah. was bad or yeah, something. Yeah, the, the wrong like, grade of copper yeah. was delivered. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, listen here, motherfucker. Like, you fucked up my copper delivery. Like, I'm going to come over there and beat the shit out of you. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Dear Mahmood, I yeah. am incensed at the quality of copper in thine yeah. offerings. Is that we not form or something? It's like yeah, literally cute, some guy yeah, was yeah. like angrily chiseling. I think it's one of those soft yeah. clay tablets, like that nonsense I oh, had you're right. joking yeah. around with. I think they like press yeah. into the sun and then sun bake it. And then, boy. Take the sunbaked tablet to your yeah. fear, <laughs> your and, fear. <laughs> and stay and wait for his reply. I don't yeah. care how long it takes. Days yeah, it takes go it by. Like three <laughs> days. <Too long>. <laughs> <laughs> a week from now, your fear will realize how much he's fucked. Yeah, I have ceased I, my purchase of his low quality copper. Yeah. I love the idea of of lost civilizations that that peaked and and valleyed long before you know our history. Mm -hmm. you know, at least. Yeah, it's, it's hard to even tell how long we've been what we would recognize as people you know like yeah. like, like if you go no, back three hundred thousand years four hundred thousand when do, when do you go back and you're like and like hey i don't you're not one of me you're you're just a fucking yeah. animal like, man yeah like, and that I shit like when like, they'll uh, say like human beings like we started between 200 and 400 thousand years ago and it's a like a lot of time that's yeah. if someone came to me and i said when did world war one conclude <laughs> and they said sometime between 200,000 and 400,000 years ago I'd say that doesn't make sense that's a sounds like you don't know shit about it sounds the like you one. don't know much about the topic at hand doesn't it <laughs> and so when they say that and they're Imagine like oh, that, well, and this dinosaur that. it was the size of a house and then later they come out and go actually dinosaurs can't be the size of houses that doesn't work out physically no, that, that's the, but think about what that would mean, right? Like if there were people just like us, as far as their brain makeup and everything, 400, 500,000 years ago, I mean, in the last like couple thousand years, we've done the thing. We've gone from fucking oh, yeah. ag barely having agriculture to being us on the moon yeah, and traveling around and, 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 you know, all the things yeah. we have that could have happened like a thousand times mm -hmm. in, 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 in the, in those yeah. lost hundreds Maybe of thousands of years. No, I, I love think that. That's my it, favorite. Technology is, lo is lost would, all the time. Could there would be would it 100%. Lost, that, that's like with the, the antique at the era clock, like the first computer that like... Oh, the Greek uh, thing they found read, on the Yeah, read the stars. Like, I think we just like, I, we were heading in that direction and then just like dark ages. And then it's just like, everything just goes to shit. And it's like, and now we're back again. Like we we, we come back and it's like... <sighs> I think if we were to blink out, like if all the humans were to just, you know, like like Thanos snapping your finger and we were gone, uh, I think I think I saw a thing that predicted how long there would still be signs of our presence here on the planet, and it's hundreds of thousands of years because yeah. of, but 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 it's not long before there's nothing left. Like even the satellites fall out of the sky, the fucking yeah. uh, plate tectonics like, eat everything, pla like shit, like everything plastic rust, and stuff everything like degrades. that. Lasts, Why would like, satellites uh, fall out of the sky? They're always integrating all, but they're yeah, all of them are okay. like like none of them. They're just stuck there. Like, they're all they don't okay. they don't like they it, an orbit is like technically they're just falling slowly. I don't know about Earth. that stuff like the James Webb that they got way the fuck out there because it's yeah. way the fuck out there. Like they yeah. can't. Well, it, would, it, it, it has to have a. That's the one that they use to take those have unremarkable have a, photos that they punch up in Photoshop. Those photos right? are badass. You need to chill. You, you gotta you gotta <laughs> get some wonder back in your life. God damn it! I don't want to hear. Yeah. It's not Photoshop. It's literally Photoshop. They admit it. Dude, do you think okay. there's actually fucking orange novas and shit that they're like, oh, we we found all this like beautiful hey. uh, kaleidoscope pictures. Really? What color do you think everything is? I think it's That's... way less marketable. 
<laughs> I think it's obviously not that. <laughs> like, the, the same way they're like, we found life on Mars for the fifth time. You're no, a gloomy didn't. Gus. You just, you just never. No, want any I just happiness, demand any results. Any I demand wonderment. results. Go back to the fucking moon before you keep pontificating. You're looking Do at the something. pictures, saying they're not pretty enough for you. Oh, did you touch this up with Photoshop? Oh, Instagram versus reality, bro. Get yeah. out of here with your. Hundred <laughs> you're, the kind of, you're the kind of guy that's like just because you like your fake stuff. At, uh, I, you look at porn you know and you're what? like, she's if wearing too much real. makeup. She's wearing too if, much makeup. She's wearing too much makeup. You know what the coolest part about the gladiatorial games back with the Romans was, in my opinion. Uh, it was that occasionally, like, the emperor would, like, get bored or whatnot, and he'd be like, hey, all those people in Section 7D, throw them in. <laughs> like, Are you and sure just that throw, like, Yeah, yeah. They just throw Ooh, a bunch of people from the crowd in. Let the, you know, let ha have the lions at them. <laughs> uh, First two rows, I'm not sure which one. What? I've never heard of that before. Yeah. I Almost didn't know positive. that seems like it would be horrible for ticket sales. <laughs> like, right? It, it seems like think. but it, because those were like those were probably the seats closest to the to the action, right? Those were those were expensive seats. These weren't the cheap so seats. So they're like right? fat rich people. And they just <laughs> throw them to the lions. This Well, they did this that, they did murder believable. Caligula like 4 or 5 years into his reign, you know. He was a madman of like 25 years old ruling the entire world and naming his horse uh, console and building like bridges over rivers and stuff. Did he, he have syphilis? I don't know anything about that. I don't think he had syphilis to my Might knowledge, but I'm not, I'm not a fucking story and I just watched a documentary about Caligula yesterday. Hmm. Oh, I'm trying to find something about them doing fucked up stuff in the, the Colosseums. They pour molten lead down people's throats and crucified. Have you guys been to the Colosseum? People. No, no that'd be really cool. Yeah. Have. yeah, I've been there. It's neat, man. Like, like, I, I, there's something about being a place where shit went down that captures my imagination. Then you stand there and you're like, that's where the pits were. And that's where the crowd, what crowds went blood crazy, like blood thirsty, blood lust up there while people died. You can walk around like where the fights were and stuff. And, uh, you know, they would, you know fill, what, like, it's so I, crazy I found it really interesting that it. they would fill it with water and have those naval battles in there. They would flood it. They would flood it and have the naval battles in there with ships. That and stuff. sounds like a PKA stat. No, no, no. I mean, you're, no, this you're free is, to check these. these this things. is actually true. That's they would, they thing. would, they would. I, I don't know because so, you guys make up shit all the time to try to get me to look like an asshole. You, this is like a regular part of PKA. And it, like, well, the uh, forgive me the, for, for for checking facts every once in a while. You, you guys are saboteurs. Well, the emperor was <laughs> tired because his mistress was a quiet talker. <laughs> and so she no, that's obviously the Seinfeld thing but yeah they did exactly what Kyle's saying where they'd wall up the sides uh -huh. they would flood the entire Coliseum and they'd have mini naval battles like that's the level of insanity that they were doing here and just like looking at it like like it's so old what year here tell me what you think what year do you think it the Coliseum opened? was built like when did they start doing shit there 700 I don't fucking know 300 go 250 80. 80. 80. The year 80. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, like I know that they didn't actually say 80 back then. Was like, what year yeah. is it? It's 80. Like, but <laughs> if if that's what they did do, it would be kind of depressing because it would be like, what year is it? It's 81. It's like, man, like we're, we're going to miss a lot of shit, aren't we? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, assume, I assume everything good starts at, I don't know, like 1,200. I have no idea, dude. It's fucking year 80. I think you're looking 80. at it wrong. I can't no, they, even read. Like, They'd be like, what happens at 100? And I don't know, it probably resets. Yeah. <laughs> I don't then even know what the next number down. is. <laughs> like, they don't even know what the next number is after 100. Yeah, they'd have to ask their master or lord or whatever. Or no, they, they could, the average Roman citizen could not read, right? Like, they were really literate for the time, but they still were, like, pretty shit, right? I have, I have no idea. I imagine. I don't know. Yeah, I still think about my time in the Colosseum. There's a underground part where like people would sort of stage before they went up, and and I just picture like imagine knowing you're about to fight for your life. Yeah, they could little... have read because there was a graffiti. Yeah, there's graffiti on the Colosseum. I remember that now. So yeah, they could read and write. Uh -huh. At least the ones who could afford Colosseum tickets. Yeah, and one of the one of the interesting things I remember lear learning about the Colosseum is there's um. Like, like, uh, I guess there's like names of gladiators and they're like their records like uh, written down. And, and there's some of these guys that were like crazy champions. And like, you know, we fought over like Conor McGregor, like, oh, he's the greatest ever. But like, go back to the year 80. 
right? Like maybe there was a fucking He-Man woman hating badass motherfucker they got out of Northern Africa and captured because he was the baddest king of king of his tribe. And like he just slaughtered men for 25 years in the in the in the ring, you know, like, Batman, like, is it possible to have like a huge technique advantage? Right. Cause now, now like we live in an era of information sharing. And, and I think only at like a higher class rating. Right. Like, like I, I feel like you've got to be like, 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 so you'd have to like, you'd have to have someone to teach you and you'd have to have the spare time to learn from mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to be a rich guy or a rich guy's son. You that, that's why when I hear about or um, a rich guy investing in you, yeah, if you were like a professional gladiator and you were owned, then I guess that that would be the scenario in which that would actually happen. Yeah, and there was a, I, I want to say Caligula fought in the, uh, maybe he's not the one. There was definitely a Roman emperor who suited up and went and fought in the ring to the death. Is that Claudius? Maybe. Yes, I, I, want, I feel like I could be that guy. Like, why does Woody only fight midgets? Ah, shut up! Don't criticize the great <laughs> one. He went and fought a badass. <laughs> Dude, look I, I, at yeah, yeah, look at this. Like, I just linked you to something. The the highest paid athlete of all time, like prorated, like measured yeah. out. It's mm -hmm. it's this Roman charioteer named Diocles. And I'm going to read this paragraph about him. Uh, or Gaius Apelius Di Diocles. It's a badass name. Uh, Diocles was a charioteer and the most prolific of his day. Starting his career at the age of 18, he raced for over 24 years, an extremely uncommon length of time because of the inherent dangers of chariot racing. It was seven laps of anything goes racing around the track with each driver also armed with a curved sword in case his opponent got too close. For his career, Diocles took part in 4,257 races, winning 1,462 of them. Wow. He, also got second, he got second place or third place in another 1,438 races. Nearly every one of his races was in the four-horse chariot, and he frequently beat the best of the best. His patented move was a strong dash to the finish, as he won nearly one-third of his races by coming from behind on the last stretch. Uh, after retiring, a monument was erected to him in Rome by his fellow racers. Uh, it's why we know the specific numbers about his life. He retired at the age of 42, uh, seven months, 23 days, and earned 35,863,120 sesterces in prizes, which comes out to around 15 billion in today's dollars. Uh, in addition, he was most likely illiterate. <laughs> <laughs> Helping so he further was, the uh, stereotypes yeah. that athletes are just stupid jocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like a real Floyd Mayweather. Like yeah, back then, yeah, he was the Floyd except mistakes. back then it was but like, can you read billion? He was like a, a Floyd Buffett. Yeah, he was like he was like like twenty Tiger Woods or Floyd something. Gates, Buffett, you know, like that's, that's pretty crazy. fucking impressive, right? Like like is that, any that, race where you have a sword just in case, I think you'd be a little on edge. <laughs> and doing four thousand of those, like what what is this, this is a percentage of you're surviving that? Like how? This, his patented move with this was a strong dash to the finish. I feel like that's not a secret. Like, aha, my big move is I go faster at the end. Like, you, there had to be some other clue. Or like, Maybe what he did is, like, hang back a bit and, like, harass with right swords and stuff. And then, like, at the end, maybe if you're in behind at the end and you can, like, really get going fast. Actually, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. I, it's I, like being like, yeah, my, the secret to basketball is just getting that perfect shot. And it's like, What? Like, that's not helpful. Like, it's not even a secret. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the secret to, to the chariot racing is to go really fast at the end. Yeah. Well, I, Chuck said. You can say going fast the whole time. If but you get there 1,400 of those, people would start catching on. I don't know. Not if you, if you were in first, second, or third place for almost 3,000 of them. Yeah. Like, that's pretty insane. But I will so, say it's not fair when people in Europe are like, oh, you stupid Americans don't know where. Latvia is and it's like <laughs> and it's like point to Oregon point point to Kentucky which one's that because there's people struggling in the northeast a lot right tell me yeah. which one's New Hampshire I don't know that <laughs> yeah you do because they're the two skinny ones and the Vermont is the v-shaped I know Vermont always Vermont I remember yeah. my teacher telling me that in third grade for like the states quiz Not and like the Hampshire. thought of like v being Vermont was like, my teacher is a genius. Like, <laughs> that I is can't... a good one. I've never heard that. Every teacher should say that. What Every did you do for the planets? For the planets, what was what? your uh, the mnemonic device for planets? Uh, or something. Was it like my my very, very excellent mother just sat under new pines? I don't remember what ours was, but it definitely wasn't that. Mm. <laughs> 
I I just remember actually I remember having more trouble with that mnemonic device than just memorizing the planet. So I just memorized the planet. Well, I use the mnemonic device. Um, do you remember um, the one for the color spectrum? We ne- we never did that. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. You never learned the. No, no, we never did a mnemonic device for it. Roy G. Biv. Oh, I, I thought you were going to be like the way I remember it is R is for red, V is oh. for violet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just remember them like this clever words. trick. Yeah, I I never know which things are like education standards and like my quirky teacher was like yeah this will work <laughs> like yeah i i don't know but they, they taught us a bunch of shit like that i'm trying to think what else um we had to do it for presidents oh i uh, what grade did you learn presidents um we did it in fifth uh, oh, it was, wait, you learned presidents in order yeah i, I yeah did you retain I, that yeah we were supposed Long to retain enough to do it, it. We didn't do. I don't remember doing well on that one. I don't remember that result of really, that at all. Taylor, I would have but thought I, you'd crush I think. That. Uh, well, I did it before fifth grade because Clinton was still in office, so I must have been in like fourth grade, third grade. It was easier oh. back in my day. It was. Yeah. Oh. I, I had, <laughs> yes. There was a time when that was a cinch. <laughs> Dude, there was, uh, the, the, Can you the memorize most, all the presidents? Yeah. Washington. Taking right. an American history class mm. in school in eighteen oh four. <laughs> just like tell us about our glorious history yeah, well yeah, nine kids, years ago i'm gonna tell you a quick story <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get american history knocked out before lunch <laughs> i was always so bored by american history we only had really? one class in my high school that was ancient history and i was so enthralled by that in comparison like it was just cool like learning about greece and rome and the and persia and all of that it's and then it'd history. be like america like in my head, I was like, okay, how can something from 250 years ago, 200 years ago, be as fascinating as something from 2,000 years ago? Really? Like, I, I always question the numbers. It was always like, oh, this army had 150,000 people up against 250,000 people. And I'm like, really? Really? Whether that many people are you full of shit? I don't yeah. buy it. That seems like a I, lot of people. And, and we, we're seeing in the modern day real time how war numbers play out. And we're going to trust Xerxes from like, you know, 2,200 years well, ago, whatever it well, is. Well, well, deaths, deaths, they definitely would exaggerate, right? But maybe not. I just don't see a reason to like. Are, they were writing it down in that time, right? Like, like if we're talking mm-hmm. about like Herodotus or something like that, it just doesn't seem like they could get away with saying that there were ten times as many troops as there were. If like I can't if tell Xerxes which ones tells him are to, real leaders, and which ones are like like yeah yeah, and then, why would Loki lie about that? Yeah. <laughs> when it's something like that, I just like I I, I pull like a, a Mac or Dennis uh, situation or whatever, and I'm just like, all right, well, what do the experts agree on? Do, are there a bunch of experts saying, uh uh-uh! uh no? They're, they're, all the experts seem to agree that there was a quarter million there. All right, well, I'm not gonna like pick at some sort of like imaginary scab because mm-hmm. of like, like I don't know, maybe there were, maybe there weren't. I know in those World War II battles, there's way more people than I can even fucking imagine, right? The, the Soviets lost 20 million people in World War II. I think it's just World War II like the, lost about 70 or 80 million people total. That is a gigantic number. Yeah, it's insane. And it was like five years long. So it's like 50,000 people a day. Well, I think our involvement was five years, but maybe the war was a bit longer if, he, if it began when he invaded mm-hmm. Poland. Okay, make it seven then? Like, yeah. Does that sound right? Yeah, um, the seventy million people in seven years is still a lot per day. Yeah, we're good at oh, it. Yeah, we're good at it. Uh, we we might be the best at it. It looks like it. You said earlier you could name the other ancient wonders of the world. Oh. I think there's six more. You want to try them? Um, I think I can get the, some. What's the uh? The, is it the? Are we gonna write them down or are we just saying? So the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. The um, what is it of Rhodes? It's Colossus. Like the, uh, the Colossus of Rhodes. A uh, Stonehenge one? No, that's not an no. ancient wonder, I don't believe. No. Um, there's... Fuck, these are harder than I thought. Obviously, the, the Great Pyramid Giza. Oh, uh, isn't the Pyramid of, like, Teclohitian or whatever that, like, Aztec one, is that in there? I don't... I didn't nope. think so. I, I think we... So you got Colossus of Rhodes, Great Pyramid of Giza, and Hang Gardens of Babylon. Hang Gardens of Babylon. The other ones oh, are... Oh, Great Wall of China. Mm-hmm. Uh, nope. What? That's not an ancient wonder of the world? No, nope. nah, only white wonders. Oh, well, damn. Yes, most of these are in Europe. Oh, the Colosseum. Nope. How about the Parthenon? 
Parthenon. No. That's got to be in there, right? Well, uh, shit, man. I, I, you know, I only got the some. White House of Alexandria. Oh, that's it. Hey, that's one. Yeah, what do you got? Okay. One. Yeah. The mausoleum. Get the fuck of off the mausoleum. Right 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 the ma- <laughs> hang on, hang on. <laughs> because he's. I know it because he said the mausoleum. It's the mausoleum of like Hernaculus or something, right? Or, yeah. Of, of, yeah. Uh-huh, Hel- Hel- uh-huh. Hernaculus. Yeah. Just, yeah. just think. I remember it. that from the Statue of Zeus. <laughs> I love that. What he's like, oh, the mausoleum. Of... I was like, all right, a lighthouse of Alexandria, library. Maybe he made that, and then he went right into the mausoleum. I'm like, all right, no, no, no. We're reading with uh, you right now. It's come to me as if in a dream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, big win, big win. <laughs> yeah, dude. Congratulations, Thank Taylor. You well done. For me. Thank you. I'm happy I got the math one. It was the one I had my ego tied to.